What is up, beautiful people? Welcome back. It is Wednesday. It is 11 a.m. And you know what that means. It is time for another web design for dummies. Uh, I've got to get sorted out here. I've got to figure out where my screens are. All right, comments and reactions. Hey, it's only a minute. It's only a minute. Y'all can give me a break. It's just a tad late. Um, okay, so we got Patrick in the house. Derek, the Hunzi is here. Silent Phil, D123, Dan Stanley. Say hi when you guys come into the stream. Throw up an early like. Got to get the early like, all right? The real OGs throw up early likes. They don't wait to see what's going to happen on the stream. They just already know what's going down. They already know it's going to be fire, and so they throw up a, a, an early like. Okay, uh, while people stroll in, let's go ahead and... Uh, that is correct, Justin. Hot fixes, hot fixes do take time. Um, let's go ahead and do some news while everybody collects themselves and strolls in to the stream. YouTube's got that nice delay where they don't like to notify everybody right away. Uh, and I, I think you guys are going to want to hear the news. Um, eh, not, I mean, nothing too exciting, but people are very, very hyped. Let me share my screen. Let me, let me get this over here. Let me make sure that we're going to be sharing the correct screen. There we go. Uh, people are, they seem very, very hyped for this, which I'm very hyped for it. So I'm glad we're all hyped for it. Uh, but Page Building 101 was announced yesterday. Brand new, free course. And this is, as the headline says, the only course that you'll, you'll need for learning web design with page builders. Uh, because, you know, well, just read it. Just go to Page Building 101 and read this right here. And then just put in your name and email address because it's a free course and it's already off to the races. We got episode one out or lesson one, I should say. Lesson one came out yesterday. Uh, I guess the course was announced the day before. I don't know. I, I get all of my uh, my days mixed up these days. Uh, and But what people have been asking is they're like, hey, is there an outline for the course? Is there a timeline for the course? No, that's not really how I roll. Um, there, there is a rough outline for the course. The outline for the course isn't even done yet. I'll just be honest with you. Um, I, I will show you though. I wanted to share on this stream the rough outline so far. And the reason why there isn't a fixed outline of every lesson and every module is because I'm trying to approach this differently. I'm, I've been thinking about, first of all, I don't like to make courses. I, I do not like to make courses, but this is a course that needed to be made. So I'm making it, but I don't like courses. I've made many, many, many courses in the past and in other industries and stuff like that. I, I just, I don't really like making courses. I'd rather just create trainings, right? Random trainings and teach things. And, and that's that. Courses are, they come with a lot of different complexities and commitments and things like that. And so, you know, they, they just come with a lot of extras and, you know, it typically like resources need to be attached to it. Maybe even handouts, other freebies that go along with it. I, you know, there's a lot, right? There's a lot. And you're going to see as the outline unfolds here, there's a lot. But the other thing is, uh, you know, I've thought about the courses I've taken and there's a lot of stuff that I really just don't like about how certain courses are structured and how information is presented uh, information often is presented as like, okay, I'm going to teach you something, but there's no connection with practicality in what they're teaching. It's like, all right, I'm going to teach you a concept, but you know, you're, you're really not going to use the concept like this in real life. Uh, but this is how I'm going to teach it to you anyway. I, I don't know why. I don't know why we do that. Uh, I, I don't know why sometimes you're, you're doing training in an environment that you're not actually going to be working in. Like this is a page builder course. Um, so we need to be working inside the page builder all the time. Uh, so I want to get to the page builder as quickly as possible, which is lesson two is right into the page builder, right into doing stuff. Uh, I'll show you the, the outline here, but, the, and, and you think about a topic like this, it's so, it, there's so many things, there's so many things to, to teach people. It's unruly. It's very, very unruly. I mean, think about, uh, you know, I feel like in order to really be a professional, you need to understand CSS. You need to be able to write some CSS to overcome some limitations of page builders. And therefore, I got to teach CSS at some point in this course. So the question is, you know, should there be a, a lesson on CSS? Should there be five lessons on CSS? 
And so as I'm outlining and thinking about the course, I'm like, no, we shouldn't do that. That's what a traditional course might attempt to do. Hey, they got to learn CSS. So we'll put a whole module on CSS and we'll spend all this time on CSS. I don't, I'm not convinced that that's the best approach. To me, it's, hey, let's introduce a lot of these things like HTML and CSS concepts as we go through lessons, tackling practical issues, tackling practical information. We do the CSS work and the HTML work and inspection alongside of that other work that we're doing. And as we go through the course, you're going to pick up more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Instead of, you know, throwing you into a pit of CSS in a single module saying, all right, now we deep dive CSS. I don't, I, I don't know. So the way I think it's going to work best is we, we go with the flow. We stay very nimble, right? I like to feel it out. So I create a lesson and then I know what maybe the next three lessons are going to be. But sometimes I get done with a lesson and I'm like, now nah, we got to switch up that order. No, nah, no, we got to this get rid of this one. Let's put a new one in because based on the last lesson I did, I saw something we didn't even think of. We need to stick this in now. And that's how I do it, right? So very, very flexible and making sure that I'm just feeling the course out as it gets created to make sure that we're all going in the right directions. Uh, that's just how I am, am doing things. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna show you guys a rough outline just so we can get a little bit of an idea. But uh, yeah, let's, well, let's pull that onto the screen. But this may, this is absolutely, I'm not even gonna say this may change. This is absolutely going to change. Absolutely, this is gonna change. But th this is the kind of stuff that I'm thinking about. And I do want you to see the, maybe the depth of the course. And by the way, this isn't even, I didn't even finish. Like we got, I got that, this is as far as I got, basically. There's more that would have to come after this. Um, and so when you think of this as like, uh, wait a minute, this is gonna be free? This, 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 this right here is gonna be, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be 100% free. In fact, not only is it going to be 100% free, I'm not even going to run ads on these videos. These, these are going to be ad-free. I don't want any distractions. I want you to just be able to do it. Just do the course, okay? Learn, just learn and, and practice and get better. Um, so no, no ads, no payments, no nothing. It's just views, okay? Um, so this is the next one that this will be coming out uh, either today or tomorrow, uh, and we're going to be looking immediately at page builder output. I want people to understand what, what is the page builder doing? What, why do we use a page builder? What in the world is the page builder for? And we need to understand what the difference is. And I'm, I'm thinking really beginner level here. You know, this is, um, anybody should be able to do this course and follow along. And if you're an advanced or intermediate person, trust me, your, your stuff is coming. Okay. Your time will come, but we're at the beginning of the course and we got to start out with, with the basics and the basics is, you know, what is HTML versus CSS? And how is the builder writing these things? And what, mo most importantly, right? What should we expect from the builder? Should we expect that a builder writes code the way we would write it if we were good at writing code? Or should we expect the builder to just create some spaghetti soup of code nonsense uh, like a lot of builders do? That's a really important lesson to look at upfront and actually show people, here is what HTML would look like if I wrote it. Here is the HTML that my builder produced. Compare those two. And here's the HTML this other builder produced. Now compare. And then we can talk about what's the problem with this spaghetti soup that's being created over here. There's a lot of problems with that spaghetti soup. So let's talk about that. And um, let's also, while we're there, learn how to inspect. How am I even looking at the HTML? How am I even looking at the CSS? Because if you can't inspect a page, I mean, you're going to be stuck for the rest of your life. you got to know how to use the browser inspector and see what's happening on the page. Um, so that's going to be the next lesson. I mean, we're diving right in. So, uh, and then it's, you know, boxes on boxes on boxes. This is just how, how websites are structured. We're going to go into sections and containers. And I guarantee you, like this sections and containers thing right here, this lesson alone, this lesson alone, I mean, if, if you think of any other video on, okay, they're going to teach us about sections in a page builder course, how boring. No, there, there's going to be so much important stuff that it's just going to be like, like it's, you know, the stuff we're going to cover, the depth that we're going to cover it in. And I'm trying to also, you know, keep these as short as possible. I think if I can keep uh, boxes on boxes on boxes to 20 minutes or 25 minutes, that'll be a huge win. Uh, same thing with sections and content. Like if these can be under 30 minutes, a lot of times, that's why there's more of them. 
That's why there's more of them. So, you know, if some of you are scared and you're like, God, Kevin does like hour, two hour videos on some of these topics. Well, the reason you're seeing more things is because I'm trying to break it up a little bit more. And so these can be a bit shorter and easier to digest. Uh, but you guys can see, I mean, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot, there's a lot to teach. Um, and you're not, notice you're not seeing any uh, real like CSS lessons. Why? Because I'm fairly confident I can teach you CSS as we go through all these lessons. So as we go through all these lessons, like I, I, I for example, I want to show you, all right, here's what the builder, when we create a grid, here's what the builder is writing in terms of CSS on the back end. And then I'm going to show you how we would write that by hand really quickly. And then, so you're going to be picking up these CSS concepts as we go through all of these other lessons in general. Same with HTML. You'll pick up basic HTML concepts. So the idea isn't that you can write HTML at the end of the course or that you should be able to write HTML. The idea is that you should be able to read HTML. That's a big difference. If you can read HTML, but you can't write it, you still can get a lot accomplished. Um, and you don't need to know how to write HTML. You just need to know how to read it and you need to know what you're looking for. So what is good HTML output versus garbage HTML output? If you can make that distinction, then all, all fine and dandy, right? Uh, and it's really, that is only necessary to choose a page builder in the first place. Uh, cause once you choose a great page builder that outputs clean code, you don't really have to worry about it all that much anymore. You can rely on people like me to nitpick it to death. Like, oh, well in terms of accessibility and this and that, like, you know, you can leave that up to me, but once you've picked a builder and that, you know, Hey, this, this builder is good. It outputs clean code. You don't really have to worry about it that much anymore. Um, but yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of the, uh, it is a pretty long list. It's a pretty long list. Uh, Ruben says, take my money. I, I'm not taking anybody's money for this. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. First video was great. Suggestion. If the title card of the sections episode is called, let's talk about sections, baby. I'm going to be, oh, isn't called like, like the song, uh, by salt and pepper. I'm going to be a little sad. Uh, yeah, that's a bold move. Bold move, Cotton. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can make that bold move or not. Okay. What do you guys think? The list scares me a little bit. Um, but it's, uh, it has to be done. Somebody had to do it, right? Might as well be me. Okay. Should we get into our first, uh, review? of our website. I think I have two, uh, two good websites that, you know, in, uh, industries that we haven't really looked at before. So a little bit different today, no agency website today. I have two, maybe I'll pull a three if we, if we go through these first two too fast. Um, but yeah, let's get this off the screen. Pagebuilding 101.com. Um, D123 says surprised. It's not inner circle stuff. That is, I already knew that this that, that that was going to be brought up, right? And I'll tell you exactly why this is not in the inner circle. Uh, it, it is, I don't see the inner circle as 101 content, right? This is a 101 course. And granted, while this 101 course is going to be far more in-depth and valuable than almost any other 101 course that's ever been created on this topic, uh, it's still, to me, fundamentals. It's still 101, right? We use the inner circle for 201 and up type stuff. All right. If you don't know what 101 and 201 and 301, like these are this is in the U S I don't know if it's anywhere else in the world, but in the U S this is how they, they number college courses, right? So like the 101 is always the intro. Then you have the 201 is like more intermediate 301 and on and on and on up. So I, I just see, I see the inner circle as 201 plus content, not 101 content, not fundamentals. So uh, I mean, there is a lot of fundamentals in there, but it's, you know, presented in a way that's uh, more 201 type, right? Uh, so, th you know, this is uh, 101. It's free for everybody. And it's a good introduction to, hey, if you loved this 101 course, then guess what? I mean, you're going to really love the inner circle. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's really valuable from that standpoint. Uh, if we can get more people using better page builders, I think that's always a gigantic win. So there's more benefit to there's more benefit to the inner circle for this to be free. There's more benefit to 
the industry for this to be free. There's more benefit to everybody for this to be free. Uh, so I just, that's the way I went. Okay. Um, I think we're good. I'm just reading the chat real quick. Will the course be ready by tomorrow? <laughs> of course, yes. Yes, let me hit start on the microwave. All right, um, here we go. Let's go. We're done talking about Page Building 101. Pagebuilding101.com, go ahead and sign up. Let me get the first website on the screen. This is Rough Guitars or R-U-F Guitars.com. R-U-F Guitars.com. We are going to start with our no scroll test. So this says right off the bat, inspired by science, created with R and D. Innovative composite instruments made of ruffane, the most advanced, fully adjustable material scientifically designed to get the perfect tone. Unprecedented ergonomics combined with the adjustable sound creates the most reliable and comfortable tool for modern musicians. Okay. I can learn more or I can go ahead and order now. And I can't scroll around because we're doing a scroll, no scroll test. So what I'm gathering is that we are selling custom guitars. We are selling custom guitars made with a material called Ruffane, which I've never heard of before. Now the name Rough Guitars makes sense. Um, I see a navigation. Right off the bat, I don't like the size of the navigation. Uh, it's, it's a bit small. Feels a bit small. Feels a bit cramped. So I would say let's maybe improve. It doesn't look very inviting. Like, does that nav make you want to use it? Not really. It's uh, it's not very inviting. So I would say like immediate. And I mean, look, look. Why are the social icons larger than the navigation of the website? That's a really good question that we should all be asking ourselves. Um, there's another question that we should ask ourselves, which is should these icons even be here? What do you say? I want to see what everybody said. Let's do a pop quiz. I mean, you probably know what I'm going to say, but let's do a pop quiz. What do you guys think? Should these social icons even be here? Should they even exist here? Now there's, I don't know if you guys can see that because this definitely is not an accessible contrast ratio. Uh, inspired by science is up here in the top. You can get rid of that too. Just get rid of this. Uh, what do you guys, why are we, I'll just, I don't know. We can even, uh, we'll just take a shortcut. Why should this not be here? Why should these icons, because I do see this quite often, quite often you'll see. And, and by the way, you've got to have an answer for this because the client is going to ask you. Clients ask you to do this all day long. Clients are in love with their social media icons. Absolutely in love. Oh, we got to get people to Facebook. We got to get people to Instagram. Uh, and then you go to their Facebook and Instagram and ain't nothing happening on Facebook. <laughs> like, you know, they're not even good at Facebook and Instagram, but they they love it. They really want people there because they've heard mm, how important social media is these days. Um, Ruben says, no, they should be at the bottom. Chaha Design says, no, no to social icons in the header. I get no, but why? Why, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Anne-Marie said it. Visitor will leave the site. We talked about this last time, I think, the episode before. This is the central marketing, the central online marketing hub for a company is their website. Social networks are satellites. They float around your central hub. You want to get everybody to the central hub and you want to keep them there until they convert. That's the goal. Okay. You don't want to send them off to satellites to poke around. All right. So we don't, there's no benefit to immediately, by the way, immediately, like the very first thing on the page, it's like, hey, do you want to leave? <laughs> I know you just got here, but do you want to leave? Do you want to go to one of these places? Uh, that's not, you know, a great UX conversion strategy. So just kill this entire top bar right here. Kill it with fire. Okay, rough guitars, navigation we talked about is too small. I mean, look at all this space you have available to you. You can easily make this navigation a little bit bigger. I'm not very keen on the uh, bar above the active link. Uh, the bar underneath the active link would probably be just fine, but the bar above the active link, it feels a little, it feels a little off. Uh, scratchable says I can't see the nav on my phone. Okay. Let's test that out. Well, oh, oh dear. 
What what are we what's our logo doing right here? Let me see this. Yeah, I don't know. I see a nav. It's not the best one in the world, but it's there. Um what I I'm, I'm more concerned with why this logo is creeping. Why is this logo creeping on us? Look at that. Oh boy. Oh no. No no no. <laughs> I always, I always see how how far in uh, to a site can we get before Kevin Hart shows up. Uh, so we have margin right and left of 151 pixels. Mm, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, see how a height and width are both set here at 130 pixels. You you don't have to do that. So you can just set a height. It's really safe to set a height on logos. See, I get rid of the width and nothing happens. Um, well, here it is here too. So I get rid of it there. My gosh. Okay. Everywhere. You want to be careful because you're set. Look at, look at, ah, see, see, I knew this was a possibility. Look at what happened to our logo. We're finagling our logo here. Um, yeah, that's always a, that's always a problem because you're setting a width and height. So you're saying this has to be a square. But maybe that's not an actual square logo. Maybe the file itself is not square. So immediately you're either cropping it or warping it when you set a width and a height. Really all you need is the height. The height allows it to not get any taller than it's supposed to be. And then its width will just be auto beyond that. So uh, much, much safer just set a height by itself. But uh, I, don't, I, don't know why, <coughs> I don't know why we have this margin left and right coming in. And I want to see if it's... Uh, it's not on desktop. It's only on mobile. So you've, I don't know, you had a situation that was not going to be a problem and you've, for some reason, created a problem. You were like, you know what? Uh, that shouldn't be on the left. We'll just, oh, we'll just pop it to the center like that uh, with margin left and right. And I don't know why that has happened. That does not need to happen. So if we take off margin left and margin right, that's what it should be doing right there. This is the left side of your page. We scroll down. You know, your content, I don't know why your content's not, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Your content should kind of be aligning uh, with it. I'm also, you know, what are you guys thinking about centering everything on mobile? I, I tend to left align everything on mobile because, you know, we've, we've talked before about some of these paragraphs being like this right here, bit too big to be centered. So I, I just think everything looks really clean when it's all left aligned on mobile. And then same thing with these icons right here, which by the way, you know, like they're taking up a lot of room on mobile. This inspired by science doesn't really give any benefit whatsoever. Um, yeah, I mean, if that just wasn't there, man, we'd be, we'd be much better off, wouldn't we? So I can get rid of that and I can get rid of that. I mean, look at this. Look now, now it's so clean. We got our branding in the top left corner where it's supposed to be. It's not creeping. It's not uh, floating out here in the middle. And then we've got our nav on the right-hand side. We've still got our translation thing. This, this is what it actually looks like, right? Versus what I just showed you. So isn't that objectively better? I mean, look at this. And then look at that. Look at this. And then look at that. I, 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 don't think, I think it's a good improvement. All right, let's talk about all this copy stuff going on here. So we've, we did our no scroll test. Um, I, let's do this. Let's do this. Derek says he prefers left aligned paragraph text only. I agree. Guitar could be rotated 90 degrees on a smartphone view. Well, yep, yep, okay. Guitar is overflowing the screen. Maybe the guitar should be upright on mobile. Yeah, all good, all good concepts for sure. I actually don't like the fact that it's uh, completely sideways on desktop. I think like an angled approach. Actually, I think, you know, a product like this would almost always be best represented vertically because now we're not covering, why would we want to cover up part of the product? Like put the product and let's not make it a background image. Let's make it a real image uh, that kind of, maybe even the tip of this guitar right here, if it was vertically, can like overlap the next section. You can create a little, you know, layering effect with it. Uh, you could put some pseudos around it to kind of help it be a little bit more exciting. And of course it would be sharper, you know, if it wasn't a stretched out background image, if it was a legit image and it was a, a vertical, I, I think definitely this could be better. Just get rid of this whole background image concept. You can leave this little honeycomb thing 
that pattern. I don't know if you guys can see that based on uh, YouTube resolution, but it's like a little honeycomb background pattern back here. Leave that, leave that, but take the guitar out of that context and make it upright and um, let's show off the whole thing. So what I'm more concerned about here is the copy though. So what I want you to do is pretend that this doesn't exist, okay? This doesn't exist and the nav doesn't exist, this logo doesn't exist and just read the headline and read nothing else. Inspired by science, created with R&D. And my question to you is, what are we talking about? If you didn't have any other context, there was no guitar photo, there was no supporting text, what are we talking about? This could be a surgical device, for all I know. Inspired by science, created with R&D. Uh, this could be a, 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 a new Tesla. This could be a lot of things. So what that tells me is this headline does not speak to this company, does not speak to this product whatsoever, specifically. Okay, so this headline's got to go. We got to rewrite this headline. Then you bring in this and we say, the, the, the way that you can easily grade this is, you know, can a fifth grader understand what I'm trying to communicate here? Because <laughs> there's a lot of big words. We've got innovative, composite, instruments. Well, it's, you know, First of all, I see guitars. Okay, I don't see any other instruments. Now, maybe there's other instruments coming. I don't know. But right now, it's a guitar. So there's no reason to use the word instruments. You know, innovative. All right, everything on the internet is innovative these days. Um, and then it's it's composite, which, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, honestly. Uh, so it made of roughing. So now we actually get to something specific that I can chew on. So we do need to talk about roughing here in, in the intro, but so far, innovative composite instruments, way too mouthy, wordy, uh, and just, you know, big words. Fully adjustable material, the most advanced fully adjustable material scientifically designed to get the perfect tone. I think we need to talk about how the material gets the perfect tone, but I don't know what fully adjustable means. I don't know why that's a benefit. I don't know how that impacts anything. Um, you know, okay, scientifically designed. It's just, we got to use more plain language here, I think. There's a much better way to explain this. And just pretend like you're talking to, you know, a fifth grader. And it's like, all right, I got to explain this to them. Uh, and write it like that. Unprecedented, ergonomics, right? It's just like, how many big words can we use? The more big words you use, the lower your conversion rate goes. Okay, so use less, use less big words. Find, find simpler words for these things. Um, okay. So let's scroll, let's start scrolling around scientists and luthiers. I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but we have another headline. Read this with no other context whatsoever. Are you getting any information? Are you getting any benefits? Are you getting anything, anything? No scientists and luthier. I, it doesn't mean anything. So most of the crew are, Oh, okay. So this is like about them. Most of the crew are mechanical engineers. This is where a little tagline, you know, absolutely. You know those accent headings that I like to use all the time? This is exactly where one goes, okay? The accent headline should say, about us. That way you're writing something in plain language indicating what I'm about to read, right? Because this doesn't give me anything. And then I got to figure it out by like, okay, most of the crew, I, I thought we were going to still talk about guitars, but now we're talking about people. Most of the crew are mechanical engineers experienced in aerospace engineering. That allows us to use the most advanced tools and software to achieve results and accuracy that cannot be matched by the competition. Woo, it's so much. It's so much. It's, um, I can tell that it was written by mechanical engineers because this is like their, their um, professor assigned them a paper and this is the paper they submitted my guy like this is uh you know you could tell this is a this is written by somebody with words right they got the words um but it just all needs to be simplified and then you can you can turn this into a story like we could just ask a question here what happens this let me just let's just riff for a minute and you tell me what you think of the, we just start out by asking a question. Maybe this could be the headline of the page. I don't even know. What happens when aerospace engineers use a new material called roughing to create the perfect sounding guitar? 
Just a question. Just ask a question. And you kind of fit all that really important stuff into one simple question. And that simple question kind of raises like, what? what? Uh, Aerospace engineers made a, made a new guitar that sounds perfect and it's made with a material called rock. I, I think I want to know more. Now tell me more. Now share with me, right? That's kind of, you want to create some intrigue. You could just do that with a, a very simple question. That could be your headline. I don't know. I think that would be a better headline than this, right? You just ask that blatant question. It's like, wow, I didn't, I've never seen a guitar created by aerospace engineers before. I've never seen a guitar created with Ruffane, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like uh, that would be a better way to go. You create like a narrative. You create, um, you know, a lot more investment from the visitor. Like, ooh, I got I to hear about this. Okay, so that's just an example. Just riffing. Get the pun yet? Okay. All right, so... See, yeah, the, the, you can rewrite this. Let's keep going. I think I think that's enough for that section. RUF guitar, rough guitars, unique features. So now we went from very abstract headlines to like ultra specific. Like, all right, now we're just we're talking about the the unique features. Um, and again, this is where I unique features should be reserved for a accent heading. And then say something meaningful with the actual large heading on the page. Because um, you can fit in more value here into this headline. Don't, don't waste headlines, like big headlines, on you know very specific um, words, right? So accent headings should say unique features, and then you have a nice big headline to talk about, like sum up the unique features almost in the, in the headline. Um, and they could, another example could be like the, the best sounding guitar you've ever heard. Okay. The best sounding guitar. So it says unique features, the best sounding guitar you've ever heard. And then guess what? Here's the reasons why it's the best sounding guitar you've ever heard. That kind of like wraps everything up. Okay. So you're just wasting an opportunity by putting unique features into this big marketing headline right here. We talk a little bit about what roughing is. All right, and then we have uh, your YouTube channel. Okay. So this looks to me like it's the latest videos, like the two latest videos. If you're a content creator, so you go to like, you go to Geary.co. I, I always have to um, give con extra context to these things because people always make these ridiculous objections. Because what I'm about to say is you shouldn't use the latest videos in the YouTube feed. And then the first thing somebody's going to do is they're going to go to my website. They're going to scroll down and they're like, you use the latest video. Like, okay, like, so let's create a distinction. If you're a content creator, it makes sense for you to have your latest video on the website. If you're selling a product, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have the latest videos. It makes more sense to have the two highest performing videos in terms of things like watch time, conversions, all of that. Like, give me your two best performing videos if you're trying to sell me something. Don't just give me the random latest video. If you're a content creator, give me the latest video. Maybe I just wanna see what you've been up to lately, right? Um, so there's a different context that we are talking in for all of the people who are like immediately want to find an example where uh, I've done something different than what I'm saying now. Okay. So I would say, you know, let's get, I want a video of the guitar, right? I want, I want a video of where's the pitch. If you got a pitch video, I want the pitch video right here. Hit me with the pitch. All right. Testimonials. Great, great, great. Ready to order. Configurator, ooh, configurator. That's gonna be fun. All right, let's click on configurator. Let's get your, oh, that doesn't look like a configurator. That looks like a, uh, a very large form. Okay, let's get your Ruffane flavored guitar done. I don't know. Am I gonna eat off of this guitar? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I get it. You're trying to add flavor to the headline maybe, um, but I'm not sure that that word works great for guitars. Okay. So the main configurator for guitars, let's see this. Cause this at first glance looks a bit like a, um, conversion nightmare. If you ask me, so we're going to go through this. 
Uh, but let me, before I dive into this forum, let me see what people are saying. I don't see how aerospace engineering is related to sound creation. Sound engineering is better. I don't know. You could, you could, you could tie it in. Look, it's marketing. You can, you can tie in almost anything. Uh, I agree. Okay. So good acoustics come from actual wood. Hey, I don't know. I, you know, yeah, traditionally maybe good. By the way, I don't know anything about guitars. Good acoustics could come from actual wood, but you can't just say, oh, it's not wood. So it doesn't have great acoustics. I mean, it's, if it's a, a material you've never heard before, at least hear it, you know, give it a chance. And that's why they need a, um, video. Wouldn't a video that says, here's the traditional wooden guitar. Sounds like this. Here's the roughing guitar. Sounds like this. It's like, Hey, let's immediately give people a comparison. Let's give people more information, context, real world video audio. Let's hit all their senses other, other than flavor. You don't need to hit the flavor. You don't need to hit the taste buds with the guitars. Okay. Um, but I think, you know, a video on the homepage that, Hey, let's show people what we're talking about. That would be a really, really good thing to have. Okay. Um, always break those long forms into steps. Well, I think there's going to be more that we're going to find out in this form that needs to happen. I traveled professionally for 10 years playing the guitar. I don't care about a website. I need to hear the difference as a guitar player video showing the difference. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. See, I don't even know anything about guitars, but what I do know is that when you're marketing products that people need to see and hear and feel and stuff like that, you better let them do that. Okay, main c series, Dr. Professor. So I'm, c I'm confused on um, the very first question. And this is what I, I, f I feel like I was going to run into this challenge. What does this mean, doctor or professor? Guitars, I see Schrodinger. I don't see doctor, I don't see professor. Anybody know what this means? And it says learn more about our series in the facts section, but now I'm leaving the order form. Doctor is our main series. It's the combination of solutions that are the best for us. And as we believe, uh, be believe, believe, uh, for modern musicians, we can also make a fully custom shape. This option is available in our configurator under professor name. It has only one step. Send us an email. Then we can do almost everything the client desires. However, they do need to be aware that the production process will probably be much longer. Okay. Uh, what is the doc? I would need to know like, okay, now I got to put my brand strategy cap on. Let, we got to go into the, into the boardroom and talk about brand strategy. I need an explanation of what a doctor and professor means. Are these, uh, music terms that I'm not aware of? Are the, do these mean anything to anybody? Cause if they don't, I think we need to rethink how our series is named. Um, so I'm just going to let the chat, anybody who is, uh, well-versed in guitaring, Go ahead and let me know if th those words, do they mean anything to you? Okay, so let's go back to the form. We can't do professor because nothing happens. So we're just going to do doctor. So the dexterity, all right, am I right or left-handed? And, and once again, I mean, you know, is dexterity the best? Can we just use plain language like, you know, are you right or left-handed? All right, right or left. It's just better to use plain language almost always. Model, Schrodinger, okay? Um, Ruffane flavor. Again, I don't, I, don't, I don't think flavor is the best word to use here, but we'll just go with plain. I do want to learn more about the flavors. Is, is flavor a common word used in, in guitaring? Some of you guitar people are going to have to help me out. Um, okay, I don't know. All right, let's keep moving on. We got a finish, satin, gloss, deep matte. Well, I don't think I've been able to see these anywhere. Where is a visualization of, see, I, see, I have to keep leaving the form in order to go learn things, in order to do the form. That should tell you right there, there's a big problem. Because unless somebody has all this information in their head automatically somehow, they're not going to be able to do this. All they're going to be like, oh my God, am I selecting the right things? Oh, what is that going to look like? Oh, there's like so many objections popping into their head. This is why companies, when you say configure your guitar, like you configure your Tesla. Let's, let's um, see. I don't know how a Tesla works. I don't know how it's created, but let's go here. Uh, order now. So model S, model S plaid. All right. So I'm going to come down here, paint, black. Hey, that's what it's going to look like. 
That's what the silver is going to look like. That's what the blue is going to look like. You see how they make this very, it's got to be visual. Now, this costs a crap load of money to do this right. It's, it's, it's quite complicated. But you know what? It's what a configurator is because people can't make the decisions if they can't see what they're configuring. And that, that, this is a common problem, right? It's not something you can cut corners on. So immediately when I, when I am consulting for a client like this and they're like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Here's our plan. We're going to have a form and it's going to have 37 fields and uh, people are just going to choose from drop downs and then they're going to hit submit. And I'm like, no, you're not. No, <laughs> that's not what we're going to do. That's not what we're going to do. Uh, we have to invest the money in creating a visual configurator if that's how we're going to do this. Uh, they've got to be able to see their options or what we're going to do if we can't do that. If we can't create a custom configure, configurator, what we're going to do is we're going to create presets effectively, right? Here's a, here's a guitar and we're going to give it a name. Here's a guitar. We're going to give it a name. Then you know what we're going to give it? We're going to put it in a series. So here's a series. Here's a series. Here's a series. Cause they, they, you know, series one might have a X shape and series two might have a different shape or style or whatever. And then there's going to be colors and we're going to show the colors of each one. And that, that's what we're going to do if we can't have a configurator, but we're not going to do this. This isn't really going to work for anybody except the diehard person that's like, I am going to get my hands on a rough guitar regardless of how hard they make it. <laughs> like the, the most determined buyer you've ever seen in your life will do this process, but everybody else probably won't. You're going to get phone calls and emails like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what all these things mean. So I, I think this has to be scrapped completely. Um, we, we've got to get better on, let's like go to this page. Is there, here's a gallery, but I don't know. To me, they all look the same. looks like a gallery of all the same guitar. Yeah, that all looks like the same guitar. So I'm not really seeing different shapes. I'm not seeing different colors. I can't select any to purchase. Um, I, I, that's, that's the route I would go. Like, let's go, you know, traditional e-com. I think that I got, you got to get rid of the configurator. If it were me, I'm consulting on this. The configurator's got to go unless we get a legit configurator. And by the way, you can create a configurator with, with WS form and WooCommerce, like, like a pretty decent, pretty much better than this. I won't say it's Tesla level, but much, much, much better than this with WS form. Like when I select the gloss, it's going to swap the image and show me a glossy one. When I switch to piano white, it's going to swap it and show me a white one. When I do, you know, this, anything I need to see related to that, like the fretboard. First of all, like somebody's got to be almost like an expert in guitaring to, to even know what all this stuff is, right? So, you know, what if I want to order for, uh, you know, as a gift for my, you know, uh, nephew or something? I don't know. Uh, it's just kind of very exclusionary, if that's a word. All right, um, let's go to about our story. Well, actually, let's go back to the homepage. Let's look at some Dom-related stuff. Let's see what this was built on. And then we're gonna swap over and we're gonna do the next uh, the next one. So this is built on oxygen. Let me get out of uh, mobile mode here. Okay, so let's look at something. Let's do an inspection like on this right here. Because immediately I see, what am I seeing? I'm seeing an element that's used multiple times right? This card, this little card here. So we have music benefits column. Okay. Uh, let's open this. We have music primary text. Okay. Music primary text. Okay. So we have a problem right off the bat with uh, the way that we're naming classes. And I, you know, I do, I do, I guess, see this quite often, I guess when people are maybe newer to using classes. So the first rule of a class is that it should be semantically accurate. The name should be semantically accurate. And we can see right off the bat that music benefits column is not semantically accurate because that, my friends, is not a column. A column is this, all, all of this. Both of these cards are in a column. But really, if this is a grid, you don't have a selectable column at all. So you don't need anything that says music benefits column. Now, this is all done with flex. It's not, it's not actually a grid, but kind of the same point remains, right? You didn't create a wrapper 
that makes a column. You just have cards. Um, I don't think. Yeah. So you have rows. You have two rows, which aren't really needed here. Um, you know, this, this should all be done in one container and it should have been done with grid because it's, it's a, it, you know, whenever you have, well, uh, guys, it's a grid. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking at a grid, then you should have done it with grid. Um, so that's one thing. So these are not columns. These are cards. So you want to rename that to, to card. This is a music primary card. I don't even know if music primary card, you know, even is a good name. You could say primary card. Doesn't even need to be music. I mean, the whole site's about music, right? So the word music doesn't really need to be there. These are features of a guitar. They're not, there's nothing music about them. They're just features. So you can name it feature card. Like that would be, that would be fine. Primary feature card. If you're going to have multiple types of feature cards, that would be fine too. But what it's not is it's not a music benefits column. Um, that It's a card. Then we get into music primary text, but that's not text. That's a heading. Uh, or it should be a heading. Let's inspect. So, ah, okay. So that's a div. And so we see the, the problem of div, 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 div. Everywhere, everything's a div. Uh, when really we need this to be, you know, some people will argue, oh, it shouldn't be a heading. It should be a paragraph. Some people will argue, no, it should be an H3. It definitely would not be an H2 or an H1. Uh, if this is an H2, then which it is. These should be H3s. Let's see what this thing is over here. Uh, H3. This should really be like in an aside. This is not a benefit. See, it's in the benefits or the features section, but it's, you know, it's a, it's kind of an, it's exactly in my estimation what an aside is for, right? So you put this in an aside tag and then it can have, um, I believe, you know, once it's in an aside tag, it can have an H2. It could be an H2 because it's kind of like the topic of the aside rather than another one of these cards right here. But really, it's not. this is not a div. And this is not a div either. It, it is, but it shouldn't be, is what I'm saying. So this should 100% be a paragraph like that. Um, and then you start to see, this is why some people don't turn these things into paragraphs. Now we have a spacing issue. Because in Oxygen, and really mo almost every builder, there's going to be default spacing that's added to a paragraph tag. Anytime a paragraph tag is detected, it gets all these margins. And this one is especially unruly because it's creating a negative left margin. Uh, oh, that's on this text block right here. Um, man, why is that happening? What was that for? Why, why, is your, why is your paragraph indented? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is the heading... Boy, hold on. I, I hit the wrong one. Oh, no. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, do you guys see that? The heading is outside the bounds of the box to the left for no reason. This didn't need to happen. There was nothing causing this. Yeah, why do these things all have a negative left margin? They don't need a negative left margin. Oh, you're trying to somehow account for the fact that there's padding inside of this card. So you have padding in a card, but then you were like, I don't really want the padding on the left. And so what I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna create a negative left margin on the elements that are inside the card. Oh, this is, this is greatly over-engineered. If you don't want padding on the card, then just remove the padding from the card. Okay, now that card doesn't have any padding. Oh God, it's overflowing the other one now. Um, do we have a gap in here? And this is the problem with Flexbox is so messy for this kind of thing. <sighs> so, oops, 2M. Okay. <laughs> See, you break the flex. See, putting a gap on a grid would not break the grid, but putting a gap on a flex container will often break the flex container because the children were set to a, an explicit width of 50% and there's not enough room for a gap. And so it's like, oh, sorry, dog, we can't have that gap. We're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to wrap now. So, um, it, it starts wrapping the content to new lines and you, you end up with all of this nonsense. Flex is that this flex is not a, a good approach to layouts like this. People, um, use flex all the time for these layouts, primarily because their builder doesn't allow them to use grid, uh, which they should be using for this type of layout. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to fix on the fly because there's so many different things going wrong with it. But 
never have padding and then be like, but I want to move the things over my padding for, just get rid of the padding and then create a gap. And you would get the same exact grid without all the nonsense going on. But this needs to be an H3. This needs to be a paragraph tag. These need to be uh, LIs inside of an unordered list. So list items inside of an unordered list because it's a list of features. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot wrong here. Um, and then I wanted to hit on this very, like, very fast. Prime, music primary text is on the heading. Music primary text class is on the text as well. These are two completely different styled things. Why do they have the same class? So the question is, what is that class doing? All that class is doing is setting a color of white, and it's setting a font size fixed of 18 pixels, and it's setting a line height and a font weight. None of this stuff that it's doing has anything to do with this class right here. These should not be shared styles across a heading. And, and you can see that they're being overridden at the ID level. This is page building 101 was built so that this st stuff does not happen anymore, right? You're going to learn exactly why, like this is, this is the spaghetti soup that I was talking about earlier. And you come back three months from now to work on this website. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. You are going to find yourself waking up in an absolute nightmare nightmare to try to maintain a website that's built like this. We've got negative margins accounting for padding that we didn't want. We've got classes that are shared between headings and text. We've got styling at the ID level overriding different things, which means I can't even fix all of these problems at the same time. I have to fix this problem card by card by card by card by card. My God, how many pages did they use this card on? I hope it's only this one. Because if it was a lot more, the nightmare just got worse. So we've got to avoid this stuff at all costs. Got to name our classes right. We got to use our classes in the right context. We can't be doing ID level stuff on, on uh, multi-use elements. We, can, we cannot be breaking these rules because we're creating nightmares. And ultimately, by the way, if you charge per, the, per hour, like if I was a client, put yourself in the client's shoes. And the client's like, oh, well, we got to change these cards. We got to add another page and we've got to change the structure of this page. There's hours of extra work involved in doing that because of how this was built. Who should pay for that? If I'm the client and I'm like, whoa, 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 you mean you can't change all these cards at the same time? You got, you got to go card by card on every page. This, I'm not paying for that. Why'd you do that? Right? You shouldn't, the client shouldn't have to pay for the inefficiencies of the developer. You're like, oh, I charge for the hour. This is how much time it takes. Well, it only takes that much time because you built it wrong. Don't build it wrong and then it won't take that much time and then it'll be cheaper for me. So I shouldn't have to pay for that if I'm the client, right? Don't you agree? Why should the client have to pay for the inefficiencies of, of the developer? And so this is a, classic example of where someone can say, oh, well, with breakdance, I can build the site faster. And I, this isn't breakdance. I get it. Right. But people always want to talk about initial speed to build a site. I don't care what the initial speed to build a site is. Cause when I look under the hood and it's a, it's a disaster. What I know is all the time you saved is now going to be wasted tenfold when we need to maintain the site and scale the site and change the site later. So you didn't save any time. You didn't do anything faster. You got to version one faster and you ensured that version two, three, and four are going to be an absolute nightmare. That's what you did. So these are, these are very, very common problems when people get their hands on page builders, but where are the fundamentals? All of the fundamentals were thrown out the window in this one section right here, which tells me they're probably thrown out the window in, across the entire website. So this is exactly what Page Building 101 is, is designed to prevent and fix. And everybody will be better off. The developer who has to come back and change things on this site will be way happier. They won't want to jump off a bridge face first. Uh, and the client will be much happier because they won't be wasting money while the developer tinkers with all the stuff they didn't build right the first time. So everybody wins when you build it right from the beginning. All right, I'm done. We're gonna we're gonna move on to. Uh, I think they've got enough value here. You can you can go back and make so many changes based on what we've said to the copy to the structure. So many things can be cleaned up here. All right, let's move on. All right, let me hit the chat. We always do a little pit stop in the chat before we uh, get to the next site. Okay, most expensive guitar cost me eighty five hundred. I would never buy a guitar without feeling it. 
That is a good point. So what they would have to do, Ruben, if um, let's say, because people are like, well, how, how do I have a guitar shop online where people can't feel the guitar? Well, you got to do something crazy, like what the mattress companies do, okay? Like if I buy a mattress online, obviously I can't go lay on it, okay? It's, there's, it's not physically possible. So the way they got around that, because there's a lot of people in the same position, like I will not buy a mattress if I can't lay on it first. There's a bunch of those people. And so how did they get around it? They got around it by saying, we'll ship you the mattress. And if you don't like it after you lay on it, then it's free to ship it back to us and we'll refund your money. No questions asked. In fact, we'll give you 90 mattress. And uh, on the 89th day, if you decide, nah, this isn't the mattress for me, pack it up, ship it back. And, uh, you know, we will, uh, we'll give you your money back and you can ship it back for free. That's how they got around it. And so you can do the same thing with the guitar. So especially if these are expensive guitars, Hey, we're going to ship you your guitar. And if you don't like it, ship it back to us and you owe us nothing. And then just take that guitar and go sell it on the website. This is a pre pre-configured. Here you go. Anybody want this? Um, all right. Ruben says I would have a heart attack to edit this website. Uh, da, 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 would be easier to rebuild. Okay. So clients hate to hear this, but I, I, I end up saying this all the time to clients, right? They're like, Hey, we want to make some changes to our website. That's always the, the code, right? We just want to make some simple changes to the website. And I'm like, well, you know, that's a nice theory. Uh, but you know, once we take a look at the website, it's like, there's no simple changes to this website. Sorry. That's just the way it is. It would actually be easier to just rebuild it. Um, because the simple changes are just hours and hours and hours of work because of the mess that was made. And that is, that is very, 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 very common. And that's what page building 101 is hopefully going to alleviate and prevent. All right, let's move on. All right. Little violets landscaping and hardscaping. Let's dive into this. Before we dive in, I want to get the chat's initial reaction. What is your initial reaction in the chat? Jump in fast. No scroll. Initial reaction. This is a landscaping and hardscaping company. Let's get initial reaction in the chat. Ruben says, don't attack breakdance. Hmm. I, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to talk about breakdance because I don't talk about builders that I haven't used. I looked at breakdance when it was in like version 0.045 or something. Uh, and I haven't looked at it since then. So I will not say anything about breakdance until I've looked at it in detail or we'll do a live. We will do a, uh, first impressions of breakdance kind of, kind of like we did with quickly. I want to do a first impressions of Webflow. I, it's been a long time since I've looked at Webflow. I want to do a first impressions of that. Um, I'm not going to bother with the Wixes and Squarespaces of the world. It's just, they're cross them off the list immediately. Um, but there's a few. I, I'm going to do a uh, first impressions of, uh, what was it? Why is the name escaping my mind right now? Uh, God, it'll come to me in just a second. Okay, so what people are saying is uh, branding is way off. Why these flowers? Don't like the image. Uh, not my cup of tea. 90s, early 2000s. Empty real estate. A lot of white space. It was throwing me cottage home craft vibes. Reminds me of the PowerPoint websites I used to make in elementary school. Okay. So Derek is here. This is Derek's site. He says... Uh, Young Woman's Business WordPress theme on Genesis Framework Cheap Website, okay? When considering what builder to use, make sure to consider the integrity of the company. Shots fired! <laughs> I also have a short question, a bit off topic, but why should you even build with a builder instead of just plain coding? Um, because a builder's faster. I, I mean, in most cases, unless you're an expert at Emmet uh, and you um, just love... You know, you just, your whole background is coding and HTML and CSS and PHP and JavaScript because it goes beyond HTML and CSS, right? So with a page builder, you need to be able to read HTML. You need to be able to write CSS and that's, and then you need to know the fundamentals. But if you're going to hand code a website, 
you have to really know HTML. You have to really know CSS. And by the way, when I say no HTML, I'm talking about the intricacies of semantic HTML and accessibility. Some of the stuff that these builders write for you, right? That's It's not just raw HTML, it's add-on, right? So you got ARIA labels in the mix. You got a lot of stuff going on. So you got to be good at all that stuff. Uh, you have to like, I, I would say you have to enjoy writing HTML, number one. So it's not even just that you know how to write it. You have to actually enjoy it as part of your process, which I don't know a lot of people that like really, super really enjoy it anymore. Um, so you have to really know HTML if you're going to do it by hand. You got to really know CSS because there's going to be a lot of stuff you have to do that a page builder does for you. Uh, and then you have to know PHP and you have to know JavaScript as well, most likely. So you, you got to know a lot more things in order to, to not use a page builder. And um, then, you know, you're also losing the, the CMS capability of WordPress unless you're going to hand code a WordPress theme. So it's just, so, you know, do you enjoy? Do you enjoy writing? I don't enjoy writing HTML. My, that is the last thing on earth that I want to write. So the idea that a page builder will write the HTML, for, even though I could, I could sit down and hand write the HTML, but I would want to jump off a bridge face first. So I would use a page builder. So a page builder writes the HTML for me. And as long as that HTML output is clean and it's not cutting corners, right? It gets me to the same destination faster and without, you know, the bridge uh, issue, then yeah, I'm going to use the page builder all day. Okay. All right. Let's get into this. Here, here's what I'll say right off the bat about this website. Here's what I'll say right off the, and it's probably, you probably couldn't guess that I was going to say this, but every website in landscaping and hardscaping looks almost identical. Like, you know, except for colors and things like that. It, they all say the same things. They all look exactly the same way. They all tend to be fairly, um, masculine, I guess. And so then I think about the average consumer who is booking landscaping services and hardscaping services. I think we have seen enough data to know that it's, you know, primarily women shopping online and, you know, for a house, like scheduling a lot of these, uh, you know, like I know my wife found the landscaper that we use, um, as an example, I know that's an N equals one situation, but I, I think, you know, it's quite common. And so there's just something in the back of my mind where we look at a website like this and it's not, it doesn't fit the mold of, uh, it's like the design is all over the place. There's floating flowers. There's, um, a slider, which we all hate. Uh, there's a, you know, logo. That's not a great logo. There's well, we can talk about this white space issue in just a second. Um, there's a, a scripty spont that usually is not ideal at all and probably actually isn't, isn't ideal for this either. But in the back of my mind somewhere, and I was just talking about this, we had a big discussion about this in my mastermind group. Ugly websites, I'm, I'm sorry to, to call this ugly, but ugly websites can convert like gangbusters um, if, it ma if it fits the target audience. And so what I can just maybe see, and you, you do an A-B test, right? And so you take a traditional landscaping site, which they, like I said, they all look the same. So what does this site have going for it? Two things. One, it doesn't look like any other landscaping site I've ever seen. Now, some will say that's good. Some will say that's bad. Two is if it is primarily women scheduling these types of services, and you could look at your data and find this out. Um, I could just see them going, oh my God, I want to support women. It's a women owned business. It's got to be a woman owned business. I'm just going to go out on a limb and just say that a woman owns this business. Let's go to about, can we find out? Can we, can we, uh, there you go. Okay. So th it's just something, it doesn't have to be a good design all the time, guys. It, you, there could be a reason we haven't thought of that this website being the way that it is could just convert like gangbusters. And it can be as simple as, Oh my God, I want to support a woman owned business. Like, cause it's, you know, it's a mom and she's like, oh, she looked at like five other landscaping websites and they all look exactly the same. And then this conveys small time, woman owned. I want to give her a shot. I just want to give her a shot. And then, like, that's it. That's it. They made the decision. Doesn't matter that there's floating flowers. Doesn't matter that, 
You know, the logo is hard to read and has tiny text. It doesn't matter that there's a terrible slider. It doesn't matter that there's gi giant white space everywhere. They found a woman owned business and it looks different and they want to give her a shot. And that's all it takes to have conversions out the wazoo. And so this could absolutely outperform a traditional landscaping marketing website. Do you agree or disagree in the chat? I've seen enough analytics on the back. I've seen enough ugly sites convert like crazy uh, because they just matched with like what the target market was looking for perfectly in terms of like copy offer, just general business, whatever. There's other reasons beyond spacing and colors and branding and this. And, well, I mean, I guess this is all kind of fits into branding, but you know, spacing and uh, balance and all the things that we traditionally look for can be off and it can still go gangbuster. Now I'm not saying it's a good, it's, I'm not saying it's a good site. I'm just saying it could, uh, it could absolutely convert. What do you guys think? Okay. Let's, um, while the chat rolls in, let's look at some things. I, I mean, I wouldn't do the flowers. Okay. Um, I think the logo takes up way too much space. Uh, the navigation comes before the branding, which I, I don't traditionally like. And, you know, this creates an issue where, let me just guess the issue. Okay. Okay. Well, you, you, you alleviated the issue. Basically, this is the entire header. The, the header takes up about 20 VH of the website. So 20% of the vertical height of the website is taken up by the header, uh, which I just feel is a lot of wasted space. Um, and it's, it's, it has to do that on every single page because the logo is not in the nav. And then, you know, the flowers, I feel like just become overkill. It's a very uh, templatey website. Like every page uses the exact same template. It's just, hey, chunks of text. We have a little bit of like left aligned image, right aligned image type thing. But this is very, like somebody said, you know, 1990s, like image floats. Um, services. Snow plowing, what? Never would have guessed. Never would have guessed that we were going to talk about snow plowing. Now, you could, you, could, you could ask the question, is snow plowing like the top service for a landscaping and hardscaping company? You know, I, I would think like uh, landscape maintenance would be maybe a top service. Then you have erosion control. Then you have landscape design. I, I'm not... I'm not really, I think this is a very difficult way to present services because you're combining a lot of, first of all, there's just white space everywhere, like white space for days. I feel like I need a, a, a white space uh, plow, right? Just like, can we, can we get a plow to just come in and just clear all this snow out of the way? There's just layers of snow right here between our, our content. Can we plow that out of the way? Like it doesn't, we don't need all that much. Um, but look at how this is presented. So residential snow plowing, and then we have a photo, and then you can learn more about it. Then maintenance has two photos, and then we have two options for things that we can do. We can see more, or we can see pricing. Well, I couldn't see pricing here on snow plowing. Um, then I come down in erosion control, learn more about erosion control, but why not pricing on erosion control? I don't know. There's now we're back to one option. We go from a large photo. This photo is... Uh, is 768 pixels wide. Then we're down here for this service. Is this service less important? Is that why you used a 512 pixel photo? Then we come down here and we're back to double photos with the see more, see pricing on landscape design. Then on hardscaping, we're back to the see more, see, see pricing with uh, two different images. Um, it's just kind of all over the place. Now we're back to one image and you can't learn more, but you can see pricing. And now it's back to two, but these are befores and afters. Um, now there's a before and after that are combined under paver ceiling. It just feels like it's so random. My brain's got to figure out all that's like happening here. Um, so I think we got to present these services in a, in a more organized fashion. That would be my main feedback for this page right here. What happens when we see more? So here's a hardscaping page. More snow to pl plow out of the way here in terms of white space. Rock bed installations, paver sidewalk installations, paver patio installations. 
Okay. These ideally would be, um, you know, this is where we get into SEO territory. This is a hundred percent SEO play. Like you, you want to be ranking for all of these things. So, you know, questions like was SEO done? Was there a site map done? But it's, it's an example of where a simple portfolio site dramatically harms the client's ability to get clients because you can't rank. You can't rank for all of these things without having pages for them. The pages are not in the navigation. That's a, that's a um, you know, you're creating hurdles right off the bat. But I learned more about snow plowing. We do have a page for this, um, but we don't have a page for other certain things. So like we go back to hardscaping. We don't have a page for rock bed installations. We don't have a page for pa uh, paver sidewalk installations. 100% there's people searching for, well, maybe we do here. Okay, you do. Paver sidewalks. There needs to be a navigation though. We can't rely on just like random buttons floating in the middle of the page. I should have been able to go services, drop down, hardscaping, paver installation right here. Bam, I'm there. So this kind of violates the rule of like, it shouldn't take more than two clicks to get to any page on the website. Services is one click. Then we go down to, first I got to scroll, 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 scroll. See more to hardscaping. That's my second click. And now I'm making a third click into paver sidewalks. And then perhaps if there's another stem off of this, I'm creating another click. So we got to get some more organization going on the site in general in terms of the navigation. Um, in the winter, there's not much landscaping to do, but plowing, yes. Okay, so is this being... Um, so I guess the argument is that this gets shuffled around depending on the season. That's fine, I guess. But I still think you could easily, like what if it was just a grid of services and I could see all this, like look how far I have to scroll to just see services. Like I gotta go, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, hope you got nothing else to do with your time. I could have seen every one of these services without scrolling in a grid right here. Then I can easily click to one of them. There can still be photos of them. All good. You don't need, you know, before and after on this page. Like if I'm interested in landscape maintenance, I'll go to the landscape maintenance page. This is where I can see galleries and befores and afters. That's what I would expect to see here. I don't need to see them when I'm selecting services. Because if I don't care about landscape maintenance, why are you showing me stuff about landscape maintenance? I don't care about it. I didn't opt in to seeing photos of landscape maintenance, all the ones like before and after. When I click to learn more about landscape maintenance, which this just says landscaping, so there's a little bit of a disconnect here. We got landscape maintenance because landscaping and landscape maintenance are not the same thing. Uh, so there's a little bit of a disconnect there. But when I click the button to learn more, that's when I've opted in for you to give me more information about that thing. So now I want to see all the photos and the befores and afters. But when I haven't opted in, what you're doing is creating more things I have to scroll past to get to what I really care about. So... This page just 100% clean this thing up. It does not need to be uh, that long. And the fact that there's all these different formats of how services are presented doesn't do it any, uh, it doesn't help it in any, in any possible way. Testimonials. So here's another, um, I talk about this all the time. You, this is why I create testimonials using custom post types. And then I use query loops to query the testimonials. But Anybody can, like this page to me is irrelevant. Um, number one, I, I don't necessarily believe you. Like I get that there are screenshots. Okay, that's great. That's better than just putting uh, text-based testimonials. But by and large, people know that you can write whatever you want on testimonial pages. And they know that you can selectively grab screenshots. And so what they're going to do Little, what I do at least, um, and I'm sure a lot of people do this, little violets, landscaping and hardscaping. So if I am somewhat convinced by the website that I'm looking at, I go to Google and I go little violets, landscaping and hardscaping. Okay. And hold on. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. There's no GMB. My guy, there's no GMB. Got to get a GMB rocking and rolling for this. Um, but I see the Facebook page. So that's all I have available to me. So I'm going to go there. So I go to the, well, I'm not, I'm not going to go on Facebook. That's a whole other mess. Okay. 
There needs to be a GMB, but because what people are going to do is they're going to be like, no, nah, I want to, I want to go see what GMB has to say about your reviews, right? I want to see all the reviews. I don't want to see the ones you picked. I want to see all the reviews. So a testimonials page to me is just like almost a waste of time. What you should do is sprinkle the testimonials throughout the pages. And you have to do this by organizing testimonials against services. So when somebody goes to hardscaping or landscape design, see more. Now I want to see on this page reviews from people who hired you for landscape design. And I want to see them sprinkled in with all the other content. So when I'm reading about landscape design, I'm seeing galleries about landscape design. I'm seeing now testimonials about landscape design. I see FAQs about landscape design. That's why your FAQs need to be custom post types, bi-directionally related to your services. So that on your landscape design page, you can have landscape design FAQs, landscape design uh, reviews. It's all contextual. And that really, 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 really helps. Re trust me. Really, 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 really helps. Okay. Yeah. GMB upsell. Yeah. That should have been upsold like day one, day one, before you build the website, make the GMB because the GMB can start ranking right away. All right. That's it. What we're going to do is uh, GMB is Google my business. I don't even know if it's called that anymore, uh, but it's your Google my business listing. So little violets, landscape, and hardscaping. So if they had a GMB, it would be right over here in a box. There'd be a box that pulls up the business profile and would have the reviews. It would have like here, lands, landscaping near me. Why is my Google not Googling right now? Come on, Google. Don't make me use Yahoo. What is going on? All right, let's go to Bing. Same thing, same concept. Okay, landscaping near me. My Google wasn't Googling. Um, so we have, let's pick a pick a person. Do, 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 do. All right, where are, I, I never use Bing. All right, lawn doctor. All right, so I'm gonna go lawn doctor. Uh, I guess Bing doesn't work the way Google does. All right, let's go back to Google. Lawn doctor. I'll just do near me. Bam. See that right there? That's a GMB. So it pulls up the nearest lawn doctor to me. And look at this. This is what, this is why people look you up on Google. Cause you can have five stars all day on your website, but they want to verify. Now they see this, they're in 86 reviews, 4.8 stars. And then what they're going to do is click and start reading. And then they're going to read a few and they're going to get good, warm and fuzzy vibes. And then you know what they're going to do? Pop right back to your website and go, all right, I'm sold. And then they're going to go fill out your contact form. I don't know if it's this website being slow or if my internet's not going great. I don't know. Uh, can I go to the services page? No, it must be. How's the stream? Are we st still streaming well? Hit me up in the chat. Am I, am I lagging? Is there anything wrong with the stream? Just want to make sure it's not. Feels like everything's still working fine, but I don't, I don't know. There it is. Let's go to Bing. What is the world coming to? Hey, I mean, you know, got problems with Google, got to move on, you know? Okay. Well, this is going to be the end of this site anyway. I'm still seeing chat things come through. I don't think that would be working if uh, we were having internet problems. Um, stream is good. Okay, good. All right. So what, what I'm going to do, I think we, we've, we've done enough of that website um, to move on. What we're going to do is finish off with Q&A. This is what, what I like to do. So we do basically two website reviews. Then we'll do generalized Q&A. Or I have always, at all times, I have a dev site pulled up where we can do anything. I mean, you could be like, show me how to do X, Y, Z. And, and we, can, uh, we can do a little mini tutorial it's up to you guys, though. You got to drop questions in the chat. Make sure your question is all caps question and then write your question. That makes it easy to find. I'm going to go ahead and start scrolling back up through to see if there's any questions that I missed. Stick to a simple and clean design with clear and legible fonts. 
Could it be the site is dynamic, e.g. in summer she moves down the plow, the page, okay? Winter is a top service, but it's not winter anymore. I don't, I don't know where that company was, so. Question, Kevin, can you zoom in a little? Um, yeah. I always forget to do this, but I, I also hate, like, when it's, when stuff is so big on my screen. Takes up too much real estate. Is that better? All right. Going through. The picture editing was a chore. Don't ask. Good landscaper, bad photographer. That's very, 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 very common. I've actually seen sometimes a redesign made conversion drop enormous. 100%, it could, it could very easily happen. The client did grow from 40,000 to 100,000 in two years. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe it. Well, I mean, first of all, look, one of the classic rules of marketing. Hey, let's just talk about this right now. One of the classic rules of marketing is say something different. Now, because obviously if you say what everybody else is saying, I mean, why, why should I listen to you versus somebody else? So say something different is a very, very just fundamental marketing strategy. The problem arises when we know we need to say something different, but there's nothing legitimately different to say. So people just make shit up, right? And um, we see this all the time in various industries. It's like, you know, we're just talking nonsense just so that we can say something different. So what I love about, you know, the page builder kind of industry, why, why do I create content here? Why, why do I feel like my content is successful? Because uh, I feel like I'm saying something different. But it's leveraging the fact that, you know, it's just like, why isn't anybody else saying that? Like, I'm saying impor important things. It just happens, to be, it just happens to be not a lot of other people saying the important things, I guess. So it, like, it just it works really well. Um, and so she, if you look at her site, you're in an industry dominated by probably men, right? Like, you know, I don't know a lot of female landscaping company owners. I know a lot of male landscaping company owners. And so just by default, you come in and you're like, hey, I'm different. You're just that like, you, you can leverage that in marketing because it's like you're doing, you look different than everybody else looks here. And you talk different than everybody else talks here. And that naturally gets a lot of attention. And then if you happen to have primarily women that are booking these companies and they're like, hey, yeah, of course. Well, well yeah, yeah, let's give her a shot. I want to give her a shot over all the other you know, men that are all have the sites looking exactly the same way, saying exactly the same things. Let's just be different for once. And that's enough to create this buzz of marketing. And so that's why the whole like, uh, you know, Seth Godin, purple cow, that just being a female business owner in landscaping is automatically like a purple cow kind of thing. God, I just see now, now it's here. I, I'm getting canceled that you called women cows. You've got, it's all, it's going off the rails. It's, it's way going off the rails. You get it. You understand. You understand. Don't, don't make it a thing. All right. <laughs> oh, I got myself. I got, sometimes I get myself. All right, I need to see questions. I can see it already. It's got, you're clipping it right now. You're clipping it. You're writing the headlines. Okay, is there a way to put thumbnails in a form dropdown? For example, if you want to choose different guitar colors and you don't have a configurator. I'm sure there is. Um, I wouldn't recommend it though because a dropdown is not a situation where I want to be selecting different guitar. It's just not... I can't think of a way that that makes the user experience great. I mean, it's, I guess it would be better than having no colors whatsoever, but I still don't, you've got to find a different way to, uh, to, to create that whole ordering situation. I don't think that putting images in the dropdown is going to solve the underlying challenge. <sighs> do it, Ruben, do it. 
Ruben's already creating his React video for this. <laughs> what do you think which web dev skill is best to master in the age of chat GPT? I haven't talked about chat GPT yet. I've got a lot of questions about chat GPT. I've got a lot of questions about AI. Kevin, what do you think about AI? What's is our, are they going to take our jobs? Um, I haven't decided yet. I'm still thinking about it. I, I do try not to uh, just immediately jump to conclusions. I feel like, you know, AI kind of like hit, it obviously hit a tipping point and a tipping point is very important. But for some reason, it feels like everybody is an expert on what AI is going to do just because it hit the tipping point, you know, a few weeks ago or whatever. And so now everybody's like, it's going to do this. It's going to do that. It's gonna, like, you don't know what it's going to do. We don't know what it's going to do yet. Okay. So let's give it a second. Let's, let's breathe. Let's see how things start to play out. Like, what's the first job to go? Let's look at that. I, I, I said this on one of my other streams. I think it was a really good, like in terms of uh, writing. Like if you ask chat GPT to write you a blog article or you just ask AI to write you a blog article. Well, we know that it can replace Buzzfeed authors. That's, that's basically what the person said. And that's hundred percent true. Like if you're a Buzzfeed author, I think that you should be terrified, but if you're a real author, you probably don't have a lot to worry about yet. So it's kind of like that, right? Um, will there come a day where just all authors are gone? No, I, you know, no. Because you have to look at um, you have to look at novelty as well. Even if there was a massive shift to AI, and it's everything AI, AI is doing everything. It's doing everything. You're going to always shift back. So there's going to come a time where everybody, because AI does everything, everybody's sick of AI, and then you know what it's going to create? It's going to create another wave where the cool thing to be is a fucking human. Right? No, I want humans to do all my shit. That's going to be the next popular thing is what was popular right before AI. Humans do everything. That was, that was what was popular. Then AI comes along. Now, AI has replaced all the humans. Look at, look at how great this is. Nope. It's only great for a time because then the next wave comes where everybody's tired of AI and they're sick of AI. Like, you remember the old days where humans did everything? It's kind of like when, um, you know, it's uh, marketing, right? Everybody went to email marketing in the early 2000s. Everybody ran to email marketing and email marketing dominated for a long time. And then you know what happened? People were like, you know what? I'm going to create a, a, a newsletter and I'm going to mail it to people like with the actual mail. And that worked like gangbusters because you know what? People were like, I want to have a physical item. I want this to be like the old days, right? Like I remember when I got a newspaper, to let, there's novelty and you, you can never count novelty out and you can never count, uh, count out the just natural ebbs and flows of how people like their preferences. People have natural ebbs and flows in their preferences. So there could be a, a, a point coming where AI just dominates and it's everywhere. And there, people are like, I told you so, told you so. To, but then it can very quickly go back to, dude, I don't, we don't, we don't actually like all this AI stuff. I like, I like humans. I like when I walked into a restaurant and like looked at somebody in the eyes and they were like, can I seat you, sir? And it wasn't a robot. I want that restaurant back. So think about this in, in a world dominated by AI and just in the restaurant industry, the cooks are robots. The hostess is a robot. There ain't a single freaking human there. The person that goes, you know what? I'm going to open a restaurant and it's all run by humans. You're, there you go. You're the purple cow. You're, you're the thing everybody flocks to now. Like, oh, look, somebody's saying something different. That's exciting. Let's go there. Let's go eat there. I want to go eat in the place that's run by humans. It's like the old days. So there's always an ebb and a flow. There's always a counter to what's popular. What's popular always becomes not popular. There's things that um, were popular once that should ne shouldn't have never been popular again. And somehow they got popular again. I'm thinking about the uh, like 80s mom jeans. Personally, I don't think those should have come back, uh, but they're everywhere now. And uh, that's baffling to me. And it just goes to show you can't predict the ebb and the flow. I would have never said, you know what's going to come back right now? You know what's going to come back? The 80s mom jeans. That, that's what's going to come back.
Never could have guessed that. No, didn't see that coming. I see a lot of stuff. I never saw that coming. So, you know, you never know. We can't. It's very hard to predict. All right. Hey, Tyler Martin says, what was the primary reason? That's actually his name. His name is Hey, Tyler Martin. Uh, what was the primary reason you switched from oxygen to bricks? Mm, rehash, rehash. Should I go there? I don't know. Um, the main reason, you said what's the primary reason? The primary reason was a culture slash leadership issue. Is how I will label it culture slash leadership issue. Um, But I also saw a lot of potential in bricks at the time. And after using bricks and getting accustomed to the workflow and realizing that it had, it has all, it checks all the boxes, checks all the boxes, checks a lot of boxes better than oxygen checks those boxes. And people don't want to hear that. People are going to, they get all up in their feelings. Um, they can't imagine how oxygen is, how bricks is better than oxygen. I, I started to create a list. Uh, I got to about 30 items. There's about 30, and these were not nitpicks. These were legitimate items. There's about 30 items on the list that I, that I prefer better. That doesn't mean oxygen's bad. It doesn't mean it's a bad builder. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with using oxygen. It doesn't mean, you know, if somebody came to me and said, which builder would you use? Bricks. Well, if I'm not going to use bricks, what would I, what would you use? Oxygen. Well, if you're not going to use oxygen, what would you use? Okay. Quickly. I don't know. Um, like you start to go down the list, right? Oxygen is still at the top. It's still at the top of the list. It's just not the one I use. Um, but it's still there. So I, when I, when I started realizing like, okay, uh, it's a, it's a newer platform. It's already a better platform in many, many different important ways. Like, I'll just give you one example. Cause people go, well, what's an example? You're not nitpicking. Give us an example. The query loop, the query loop in bricks is, um, I don't know, 30 times better than oxygen's repeater. That's not like, you know, that that's, that's not over exaggerating. Uh, I, I, the fact that it, queries, taxonomies, and users right off the bat makes it, you know, 20 times more powerful. Um, then the fact that it's tied to a single element and not a container, that's even more powerful. Uh, the choosing the actual query parameters, way easier, way faster. Uh, the rendering of the query loops inside of the canvas, way better. Um, the fact that you, now they fix it in oxygen, but the fact that you can actually use semantic HTML for query loops, which you couldn't do in oxygen before. Um, you know, there's, there's, we, we could just, how, how deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole? But it's legitimate. It's legitimate. Uh, and um, so that's why ultimately, like, I think Bricks is, is the best builder available right now for WordPress. Right now. Doesn't mean it's always going to be like that. But if I were to just grade based on what I've seen and what I've used and what I've done, Bricks is the best right now. Sections. And we're going to get into this in, in the course a little bit. Sections. The section element. You take something so basic. The section element. In fact, let me, um, let's just do this. Let's do this. Let's just go off on a tangent. Because, you know, people talk about Webflow. You know, I, I was poking around Webflow. And I ran into something. You, gotta, you guys got to see this, okay? Let's just go there. Let's just go. Here's the site. Here's the site. Are you guys familiar with Webflow? Does anybody use Webflow? You can see exactly what I was looking at right here. I'm just going to delete these. First of all, I feel like Webflow is starting to feel a little outdated, isn't it? Like this doesn't feel, it used to feel modern. But now that I look at it again, I haven't looked at Webflow in a long time. It just feels very, it's feeling very outdated to me. But watch this. I'm going to go add a, well, first of all, can we just talk about the fact that when you're styling something, let me add something to a page. I'll, I'll just add this section. The idea of adding things on the left and then going all the way to the right to style it, I hate that. I just absolutely hate it. I, I don't know if you can move this, you know? I'm not a, a web flow expert, right? 
I can collapse. I can expand. It doesn't show me that I can move it. Like if I could redock it to the left, that might be nice. But objectively, I don't need the styling panel open at all times. Okay. You know what I need open at all times? The navigator. This thing is very important. This panel right here. And this is the same problem I have with Gutenberg, by the way. So I hit the plus sign here. Where's my navigator? Can't see it. Why? I need to see my navigator at all times, especially when I'm adding elements, because I need to know where that element is going to go. So what this forces me to do is find the area first that I need, right? Be Just be diligent about that, because the minute I click plus, like in my brain, I'm like, I want to add an element. So what happens a lot in bricks is I'll click the plus, and then this comes up. And then I'm like, oh yeah, where do I want to add it? Well, the structure panel's always open over here. So I can just say, ah, oh, right there. And then I click the element I want to add and boom, it adds it to the right place. And that's because the structure panel is always in view. Why is this style panel in view when I'm adding an element? I can't style what I haven't added yet. And I can't see the structure panel to even see really what I have selected if I have a kind of a complex page going on. So the fact that the style panel stays open at all times is absolutely meaningless. Um, this is just general UX, like kind of turns into a nightmare the more you, you use something and you start to realize this. But the fact that you're covering up the navigator when I go to add elements, that's a nightmare. That's an absolute nightmare. Uh, and again, there's no way to redock this on the other side. So I, I hate that. And Gutenberg does that too. You add an element in Gutenberg, there goes your list view. List view, poof, gone. E even worse, okay, this isn't even that bad because when I close this, at least my navigator is still there. In Gutenberg, when you open this, the add elements panel, and then you click out, the navigator's gone too. The list goes with it. <laughs> they all disappear. Um, so even more atrocious. Uh, but, but look at this. This was even more baffling. This was even, and we're going to get into this in the course when we talk about sections. Remember I said sections and containers? There's a lot to talk about. Well, here's a little taste. Why is there a section element? We can all agree that a section, a container, a block, and a div are all just boxes on the internet. Now, semantically, they're different. And contextually, they're different. That's a good point. If you were about to make that point, you, sir or ma'am, just made a really good point. But Kevin, they're different. Right, they're different. Okay, so explain this. I add a section. I'm gonna put something in the section just so that we can see. So I'm gonna add a heading. So I'm gonna drag that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. Publish to selected domains. I think this is how this works. Uh, Webflow takes quite a while to save changes too, I've noticed. All right, so let's go view this on the front end. So I'm gonna inspect. And there's my section. Guys, what is wrong with that? Type in the chat right now and tell me, what is wrong with that? And we can start here if you want a hint. What is the section element for in Webflow? If it adds a div. Shouldn't it have added something that looks a little like that? What, what am I missing? I mean, this is Webflow we're talking about, right? This is, this is a, I mean, this is the, the pro tool outside of WordPress. Somebody explain that to me. This is an unexplainable situation. Why have this? I could have just added the div element. Why is there a section? Let me go to the chat. Let me see if somebody has an explanation for me. <laughs> Command E, you can add items without losing the structure panel on Webflow. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but that requires me to start learning keyboard shortcuts. And this is generalized UX that doesn't have to be a problem. We know that if we put the navigator on the right, that it's just not a problem. So I don't need shortcuts. I shouldn't need to use shortcuts to get around UX issues, I guess would be the argument that I would make. This navigator should not be here. And you'll see a lot of bricks does not put the navigator here. Oxygen does not put the navigator here. So clearly we have examples where it's a better flow when the navigator is not right here. The style panel can be right here. Cause you know what? I don't need the style panel when I'm adding elements cause I haven't added anything I want to style yet. So if I'm actively adding elements, 
it's this thing I don't need yet in Webflow and in um, uh, Gutenberg. This panel is always over here, always open. Don't need it when I'm adding elements. So hide that. I need my structure panel. So put the structure panel over here. That's the best flow, in my opinion, for a uh, builder. Okay, section does not equal div class equals section. You're right. You're right. It's unexplainable. So for those of you who said that we know it's all, they're all boxes. It's all a form of a box, but a section. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, guys. Here we go. Here we go. What else is missing from this section? See, in order to have a proper section in Webflow, I not only have to add the section element, but I have to add a container element. And I can't, see, I had to close the add panel to get to this so that I can choose my section. Now I can come back to the add panel. Now I can click on my container and it, it's still, okay, it, it did. It added it to the section. I'm gonna put the heading inside the container. Okay, now save. Now save, okay? All right, here we go. <laughs> we'll wait. All right, refresh. Oh, inspect, okay. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you saying? Unsupported browser, get out of here. Inspect, okay. Now look, oh, there's my section. But here, I gotta go an extra step to make this right. So section, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna search for... Where the heck? Uh, hold on, I gotta turn this. All right. Uh, no, we don't wanna do that. Oh dear, oh gosh. Uh, all I wanna do is change the, the, see, now I gotta search around for like, where's the HTML tag controlled by? Um, and I don't see it right here. We don't wanna do anything with the layout. Is it here? There it is, right there. Okay, section, save, publish. Okay, so the, you're telling me the people at Webflow with their millions of dollars were like, you know what we should do? We should create a section block. But here's the, th here's the thing, here's the thing. Brilliant idea, just hear me out. When they add the section block, it should add a div. I don't object yet, just listen, just listen. And it also should not add the inner wrapper that's supposed to come with a section. They should add that themselves. And, and, the HTML, to, yeah, it will just, every time, every time they add a section, they need to go uh, change the HTML tag on their own. And then they have to add the inner container all on their own. Like, where was, where was anybody with a brain during that discussion? Why does the sec, why does, what is this for? It's just a div. Why call it a section? It doesn't do anything that the section is supposed to do. So why are we calling it a section? It was unexplainable. It was the very first thing I looked at. Very first thing I looked at. I was like, well, let's add a section to a page. Let's put something in. Well, that doesn't look like a section. Oh, let me inspect it. Oh, it's not a section. It's a div. All right, now I got to add an inner container. Then I got to figure out how to change the HTML tag. Oh, I got to do this every time I add. Turns out uh, a, a section is quite a common element. I mean, there's going to be many, many, many of these things on the page. Talk about a workflow killer. So what do I have to do? I got to somehow create the section the way that's supposed to be created and then like save it as some sort of reusable block. Why? It, it should just be done the way it needs to be done. Go to bricks. Okay, let's just compare, compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. So we go to pages. Uh, let's just add new. Here we go. And we're just gonna say, hey, this, this page is gonna be all about sections. All right, so we're gonna edit with bricks. We're gonna add a section. Hey, bricks. Hey, they have, they have a, look, they have a block named the same thing. Okay. So does it behave the same way? We add the section. Let me throw a heading in it. <laughs> and we save. And we go to the front end. Like, guys, I, if you don't think this stuff matters, I don't know what to tell you. There's a section. My gosh, imagine that. That I asked it to add a section and it added a section. Wow. And, and that section came with an inner container that is the width of my website. Man, how helpful. God, that's so helpful. That's not like, is that groundbreaking or earth shattering? Like, is that so hard to figure out that that's what a section should do? Now, let's, let's check uh, oxygen. I'm gonna go to oxygen. This is a good juxtaposition, actually, because there's actually a problem here. So I go to pages. I, I mean, I think you all know where this is going. Uh, so I'll go to add new, and we'll just do sections. Okay, here we go. Publish, publish, and edit. 
So we are jumping in. A little bit longer to get into the builder. Okay. Um, now we're going to add a section. Hey, look at that. Hey, that's familiar. Section. Brick said section. Webflow said section. All right. I'm going to add it. Let's see what happens. Uh, then we're going to add a heading. And I will save. And then we'll go view this on the front end. So exit the front end. There we are. Inspect. What would you expect to be here? Hey, a section. Imagine that. It added the thing I asked it to add. And, and it gave me an inner wrapper that's my website with how helpful. So helpful. But unfortunately, there's a womp womp. Um, the womp womp is, here's Bricks. Bricks gives me access to the inner container and the ability to add multiple inner containers. Guys, if you haven't done this, this is fantastic. This is having access to the inner container and being able to make more of them. Whew, fantastic. You don't realize how much you're missing until you start doing this. And then you're like, oh man, you know, and, and we already knew like, you know, it, I've always said, here's a fun, if you're building a builder, here is a fundamental rule you should never break. If you create a wrapper, I don't care what reason you create it for. Now, Elementor, well, they'll create like eight wrappers for you. Obviously that's not needed, but if you are going to create a wrapper, give the user access to the wrapper. They have to be able to select it in the builder. That's it. That's a fundamental rule. Do not create a wrapper that you do not give the user access to because it creates problems. It always creates problems. Um, so, so this, this is what Webflow should do. Webflow should add a section with a container inside of it and you're off to the races. It has the proper, it, that's, the builder is supposed to do things for me. It's supposed to speed up my workflow. I'm adding a section because I want a section and a section should have an inner wrapper that is the width of my website. And that's what it should do. I, for some reason, Webflow, the God King of non-WordPress page builders can't even add a section properly to the page. Now I'm not saying Webflow is excluded and they're not a professional. I just don't know what they're doing. I just want somebody to explain it to me. Like it was kind of like the couple of weeks ago where I was like, get Matt Mullenweg on the phone. I, I, I need him to explain to me this situation with Google. Get me somebody from Webflow to explain this situation because I can't explain it. There's no explainable reason why that section in Webflow works the way that it does. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, how does breakdance do it? I don't have a, I don't have a preloaded breakdance, uh, version, so I can't, I can't pull it up and see, but I, I would like to inspect it and, uh, and see what's going on with it. But these are the th things you can look at. And if you don't think this stuff is important, man, I don't know what to tell you. This is critical guys. If you don't have access to this inner wrapper, you can't turn your section into a grid. It's impossible. Well in oxygen, you can. So, and here's why, here's why. I think you can. I haven't done it in a while. Let's let's see. Let's do this test. But I'll, I'll tell you that in most builders, uh, it's well. Actually, this would be a good example. Either way, I win. Either way, my argument wins. Okay. Um, where's my structure panel? There you go. Okay. Let's delete this heading. So what I want to do is I want to add uh, a bunch of divs. So div 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 div. Uh, oh, I forgot that it. Okay. Let me just duplicate real quick. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, three, four, five, six. All right, save. So now what I'm going to do is if I use their grid builder, so I'm going to go over here. We'll just do this at the ID level. It doesn't really matter. God, it's been a while. This is nostalgic. Um, layout. It's probably under there. Grid, grid. There you go. Column count three. Why does this work? Technically, this should not work. If you add a grid to a section it is going to turn the inner wrapper into the first child of the grid. And all of your content will be stuffed into the first cell. So all of your content would be stuffed into this size of a box right here. But in Oxygen, it's because these, these tools right here actually add the grid instruction to the inner wrapper that you don't have access to. So they created a workaround for, so they kind of created a problem by not giving you access to the inner wrapper, but then they overcame that problem by making sure their controls target the right element. Watch this, okay? Watch this. Now, I take off this grid. There, We're back to where we were. I use automatic CSS. 
I don't even know if automatic CSS is on here. Okay, it is. So I'm going to do a grid three class. Why does that work? That should not work. If you pick up another framework, go get, go get Winden. Go get Winden. Go get Winden and put a grid three instruction on a section. Probably going to break. You're not going to get this as the result because automatic CSS also recognized, hey, there's an inner wrapper in these sections. We have to target that with our grid instruction. There's overrides in automatic CSS per builder based on how builders do things, okay? This is why we can't automatically integrate with every builder because builders do things differently. They make different decisions. And based on the decisions that they make, we have to tailor the framework to work with those decisions. Otherwise, things break, right? So I put the grid three on here and it works because we already identified this as a problem and there's already an override in place to make sure the grids can work on sections, okay? But if you try another framework, hey, who knows? Maybe it'll break. Uh, in fact, I tested it on a couple others. Ah, saw some breakage. Um, so that's, the, that's what I'm talking about. But it's really caused by the inner wrapper because in bricks, guess what? In bricks, we don't need an override. You don't need an override in bricks. Watch this. Because... In my container that I have access to, I can add my blocks, five, six, okay? All I do is put the grid three, not on the section, I put it on the container that I have access to and I get a grid and I don't, it requires no overrides whatsoever. Bricks was much easier to integrate with because it does things objectively better. It's just how it is. I'm not hating on anybody. I'm not, it's just saying, it's objectively better. It don't violate the rule of creating wrappers that you don't give people access to because it creates problems. And most people don't realize these problems exist until they run into them. And they're like, oh, now I get it. Well, that's a pain in the ass. Right, it's a pain in the ass. I could have told you that from day one. So, because I'm forced to do this stuff all the time. I'm forced to be in all of these builders trying to, looking at, all right, how are we going to integrate with this? What are the challenges? What are the problems? What is it not doing the way that it's supposed to do? It's just the life I, I'm like forced to live. So I, I see all these things ahead of time. And, you know, it, it's, um, it is, it creates lots of pains in the asses. People don't realize wh why I would say Elementor is trash when it, it gives you eight divs for every element that you add. And then by the way, oh, let me just show you. Here we go. Where, where's my Elementor? Where is, where, where are we at here? Okay, local. So, uh, Elementor, here you go. All right, so we're gonna open this. Why, what, this is a, this is like a CSS violation that maybe prison time is, is um, <laughs> could, could be given for this. Uh, so I go to pages, Elementor, where, where was I? I don't know, sample page, is that what I was doing? Yeah, okay, all right. So first of all, let's look here. Man, we're just riffing all day, right? It's fun though. If you're having fun, I'm having fun. Let's keep going. So Elementor is like, remember how I said they're all boxes? Well, Elementor is like, well, they're all boxes. So we'll just give you a box and it's called a container. And so you add the container to the page. You add the container to the page. Oh, see, I can't drag up here. Have to drag right here. All right, so every builder does things a little bit differently. All right, so I add the container to the page, but I need this to be a section. Guys, a, a section is the fundamental thing that you add to the page first before you add anything else because you have to section your content. So I need this to be a section, but there is no section block. It doesn't exist. You only are given a container. So what you have to do every time you need a section is you have to change the HTML tag to section, then you have to put another container inside that container. So you gotta go back here. Now we add another container here and this container is gonna be our inner, all right? And it needs to be um, our box width. And then I believe that this outer container needs to be full width, but I'm, I'm not sure because of how it all works. All right, I'm just gonna update, but this, this wasn't the point. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a heading. Okay, heading, heading, heading. There you go, okay? Um, and then I'm going to say my heading and what I'm going to do to identify, first of all, we're going to look at the Dom. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a class to this. Can you add classes in Elementor? Yes. You can add classes in Elementor, my heading. You can't style classes in Elementor cause it's not a class first builder, but you can add classes. And I'm only adding this class to illustrate something. 
And again, I said, this is, I mean, CSS prison time, right? If there were, if there was prison time given out in the land of CSS, this would warrant it. Um, so I'm going to go to, uh, I don't even know how to preview this shit. How, how do you get to the front of the website? Um, cause I don't want to preview in the builder. Let me just here. It's, it's this page, right? Is this it? No, that's not it. All right. Let me go back to pages. We're going to go to sample page view. Bam. There we are. Inspect. Okay. Let's find the section. There's the section right here. But guys, that's not all. You get this wrapper too. Um, so you get this wrapper, then you get your section. Then remember that what is supposed to be inside of a section? Let's just pause and ask pop quiz. What should be inside of a section? One div, one inner container div. That's it. And I should have access to that div. Let's open one inner container, two inner containers, three inner containers, four inner containers, inline styling, a, a whole inline styling block, and then my H2. Okay? A lot of containers. Containers, by the way, that I don't have access to. I only have access to two of these containers in the builder. All the rest I don't have access to. This isn't even the thing that gets prison time. Okay? That's not even the thing that gets prison time. Do you remember that I put a class on my heading called my heading? I want you to look at this heading right here and tell me, oddly, what's missing. Do you see a, do you see a my heading class on this heading? No. Well, I kind of need it to be there because that's what I asked it to be added to. And that's the thing I want to style. And so if I want to write something like H2 uh, period my heading like that, well, we're going to have a big problem, aren't we? Well, well, where did you put the class, Mr. Elementor? Well, let's go find it. Is it on the div that's wrapping the H2? Nope, it's not there either. Is it on this? Oh, it's three levels up. It's on, wait, hold on. Yep, there it is, my heading. It's on the second wrapper. By the way, neither of these wrappers need to be here. This inline style block doesn't need to be here. But it's not, even a, it's not even putting the class on the element I asked it to put the class. Do you understand what the CSS ramifications of this are? I mean, this, this is a travesty. This is, like, like I said, CS, the land of CSS. Here we are in the land of CSS. You get prison time for this. This is, this is unexplainable stuff. So there's your, uh, there, there's your explanations right there. I don't know. We need to get back to the chat. I don't know what people are thinking. I don't know how people are reacting. Okay. Let's take a break. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, can you enable the Flexbox containers? It's like Easter Bunny Hunt. Find my class. Exactly. Uh, I've used it since maybe 2013 on and off. It used to be the rule of the ruse purely because nothing. I, okay, I don't know which builder you're talking about. Oh, Divi. You guys are talking about Divi. I would say Divi is even worse than Elementor. Is it? Let's go. Let's go find out. Let's go find out. Got a Divi installation right here. Look at that. Go to admin. All right. So we're going to go to pages. We're going to go to, I don't know, home. Okay. Uh, don't restore. All right. Here's a heading right here on a page. First of all, let's inspect this. Let's see what's going on. And once again, I don't know how to preview, so I'm just going to go there. All right. Inspect. Okay. So. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> uh, here's your main content. There's an article tag. All right, this isn't, uh, okay. Um, entry content wrapper, another wrapper, another wrapper. Here's the section. Look at this, PB section zero. So that's telling me section regular. That's telling me this is the section, but uh-oh. It's not actually a section. Semantically, it's not a section, Okay. Uh, then there's an inner for this row. Then there is a div wrapper for this heading. Another wrapper for the, another wrapper for the, and then the heading. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to test this. So we go here. How do you add a class? Advanced uh, CSS ID class. Okay. My heading. Safe. 
Safe. Refresh. Inspect. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, first, I don't see it at all. Oh, there it is right there. It's cut off. Okay. My heading. So it's what? Two? Yeah, it's the same. No, it's exactly the same. This is exactly the same. So don't come at me, bro, with the element or element or better than Divi. I don't see it. They're doing the same exact thing. Two rappers uh, and the class is on the second rapper. My heading right there. There's the rapper. There's another rapper. There's the heading. This is exactly what Elementor did. Unexplainable, by the way. 100% unexplainable. L look at how this happens in, um, in Bricks. So I'm going to add a section. I'm going to, inside of my container, which I have access to, I'm going to add a heading. And I'm going to put a class on the heading of my heading. Save. Refresh. My God, is this so hard? There's the section I added. There's the inner container I have access to. There's the heading with a class of my heading. It's not asking for a lot. The uh, All of these wrappers that get added and this junk and this nonsense, oh, we'll just throw the class over here. What are you doing? This is what a builder should output. There's no reason for all of the other stuff. Zero. This is what you should get. This is what you asked for. This is what you got. Guys, this is as if I sat down and wrote it by hand. And if you don't think there's a difference that's meaningful between these things, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. So that's it. This is why. I mean, when somebody says, oh, there's, there's no builder that's objectively better than this, but we're looking at it. This is the evidence. This is the evidence. This is quite compelling. Now, when this is just scratching those guys, this is the basics of the basics. This is like, we're not even to query loops. We're not even to querying objects instead of just posts. We're not into anything. Uh, are the accordions accessible? Is there a modal that's accessible? Is there a menu that's accessible? We didn't even get, we don't, we're not even anywhere near that. We're just, can I add a section and it gives me a semantic HTML section tag and it puts a container in there that I have access to. And then when I add a class to something, it, it, this is day one of what a builder should do. When you're developing a builder, if we don't get this right, nothing else matters. This is a, it's a disaster, these builders. And you've got to be very, very, very careful which one you choose. Well, why do I say oxygen's up there? If we did this in oxygen, it's going to give the same exact output. Why? Because this is objectively the correct output. The only problem with oxygen is not going to give you access to the inner wrapper, which I believe they could very easily fix. Um, so, and I hope they do. You'll get this exact same output in oxygen. You'll get this exact same output, I'm fairly confident, in quickly. You'll get this exact same, well, I don't know. I haven't used Pine Grow enough. But I imagine that I can, get, I, can, I can get this exact. I don't know what the section element in Pine Grow does or doesn't do. But I can guarantee I can make this outcome happen. You cannot make this outcome happen in Elementor or Divi. It's impossible. You cannot make it happen. Because every element comes with wrappers. And you can't put a class on the thing you want to put a class on. It's not possible in these builders to achieve the correct HTML output. If that's not a deal breaker for you, like what are we doing here? You can't even do the most basic of the basic. So why are we even entertaining it? That's kind of my, my position. All right. Rant, 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 rant. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. I've never been to a Baptist church, but I have seen them on TV. <laughs> so while Kyle's here, <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Let me, let me go over here. Uh, generate. Okay. Let me pull this up. I have, let me tell you guys right now. 
Um, I want, I want generate to be fantastically successful. Um, I, I like their, and it's, here's why I fundamentally like their approach. I firmly believe that they, they think kind of like I do that. They're like, there's a lot of trash out there and we're going to create something that's not trash. And that's inspiring to me. And for that reason, I, I, I a hundred percent want them to succeed. So you know, I just haven't played around with it enough yet, I'm, but I'm curious about what, what are we talking about right now? How, how does it start to stack up? Now, I don't know if I'm using the right version. So in all fairness, and, and again, I should do more of these uh, first looks. We need to do more first looks at builders. This is why it's so important to do first looks at builders and inspect this kind of stuff and look at it, right? And so, and by the way, I, I'm going to say, I, I, I want automatic CSS to integrate with Generate. Again, because I like their philosophy and I think that their team thinks in the right direction. So with that said, uh, I'm coming with a little bias of, I want, I want, gener I don't care if Divi continues to be successful or not, because I think it's a disaster. I don't care if Elementor continues to be successful or not. I, I, I want Generate to be successful. Okay. So that's the angle that I'm approaching this from. But I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look for a section element. And I don't see one. Now, I think we can all agree by now that a section element is very important because it saves a tremendous amount of time. We add lots of them to the page. They're a multi-container element. They need a special semantic HTML tag. So a container and a section are objectively not the same thing. And so we should have an element called a section. In, a, in any builder, every builder should have an element called a section that we drag onto the page and it has an inner container that is the website width. It has a semantic sec uh, section tag and you can access both containers. Okay, that's the, that's the bottom line, like base level rule of sections, okay? So I don't have one. So what I have to do is add a container. I'm fairly confident that I can uh, switch this to a section, okay? So... What I will say sometimes is if I have to work around it, but I can get to the same destination, that's not necessarily a deal breaker. The deal breaker is Divi and Elementor where there is no path to the right outcome. There is none, zero. There is no workaround. No path will get me to the right outcome. So there can still be a path here to get to the right outcome. Uh, I don't know how to change the HTML tag. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, bam, section, got it. Step one, done. Now, what I have to do uh, next, see how I don't have my list view anymore? Okay, so there's my list view. So what I have to do next is I have to add a, uh, somebody said there was a shortcut way to, to be doing this. Maybe it's in here. Okay, now I have to add another container. And so this is gonna be a div, and then this is gonna be my website width, which I don't know where this 1366 is coming from. Maybe I set that up at some point. But these are both appear to be 1366. The section actually needs to be 100%. Um, can I change that? Oh, oh, this, okay. That's the fundamental problem right there. Um, so there's a inner container in these containers that I don't have access to. So we've kind of violated rule number one right there. Um, but let me go to the front end. Let me put something else in here. So here's my container. Let me put in a heading. Bam. Okay, my heading. And then we're gonna put a class on that heading. My heading, and I'm gonna update. And then what we're gonna do is go take a look at the front end. Now, what I was gonna say a minute ago is there is some sort of news release I've heard, don't really know much about it, where they're gonna give you a container element or something that doesn't have an inner wrapper. And that will fundamentally solve some of what we're about to see as a problem. Uh, and so I'm going to go to the front end, which, uh, I hate you have to go through this stupid preview mode. Okay. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to preview it, but whatever. All right. So inspect. Okay. There's my section. There's the inner wrapper that I don't have access to. There's another container and then it has its own inner wrapper. So this is going to be fixed. I'm confident this is going to be fixed. But what we've had, when you don't give access to the inner wrapper and the inner wrapper is forced to be there, you have a two DOM element situation that is now a four DOM element situation. And if you multiply that across the website, that's a lot of DOM elements that don't need to be there, right? Um, 
All right, so I'm going to open that up. And here you go. Other than the inner wrappers that I don't have access to, which I think are going away, I've achieved exactly what I need to achieve from an HTML standpoint. I have my section. I have one inner container. Let's just pretend that there's one of them. Then I have a clean H2, and that H2 has the heading I wanted it to have. Box checked. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. And it, it just feels like when we're asking for standards of page builder output, this is not hard to live up to, right? And it's like, shouldn't, shouldn't this be like the thing that we really hold their feet to the fire on? Like, I don't want a page builder that gives me garbage. I want a page builder that does it like how I would do it if I were writing it by hand. I just don't want to write it by hand. That's why I'm using a page builder. Okay. Justin is happy. Justin is happy that there's a, I love the uh, trademark at the end. This is, this is fantastic. I think you should do a break dance test as well. I will. I'll do a, I'll do a whole, uh, why don't we do a two hour first look at break dance? All right. See, people do find value in this. So I'm glad. I don't like to just feel like I'm ranting if uh, like nobody cares, you know, like I've got better shit to do. Uh, Kevin, what's going on with frames? I don't know. Well, there's nothing going on with frames that I know of that's broken. Um, don't worry if you screw up, I'll yell at you. Yes. I, I mean, I, that's what I ask for actually on, especially when I do these lives. Um, you know, when I do a first look and I tell people at the very beginning, guys, I've never used this builder before. It's called a first look because it's a first look. So if I'm doing something wrong, absolutely yell at me. I don't want to give a builder an unfair shake. If I'm doing something wrong in the builder, like that's not the way you're supposed to, or, or I'm missing something, I want people yelling in the chat. Like, no, dude, that's not how you do it. You got to do this instead. And then I can, then I can actually grade it the way it's supposed to be graded. That's, that's what I look for. Yeah, it looks like you're in an old version. Save this for when you're on a newer copy. Yeah, I'll do, um, I need to get the, the, I'll get the latest copy and then I'll give it a full two hour first look, just the, the same way I did for quickly. Uh, and then we'll, we'll keep going. So I, I have to do it anyway, because to integrate ACSS, I, I got to know, you know, fundamentally how everything is structured. So 1366 comes from what you set as the default in customizer. Okay, good. Um, there's not an unselectable inner container anymore. Perfect. But are they giving a, uh, are they giving a section element, a dedicated section element so that I don't have to always change the semantic HTML tag and then add an inner container. And then like, that's a lot of steps for a section. So do you know if they're giving us a section block, for example? And then ideally, like we didn't even talk about spacing, right? A section should come with uh, top and bottom padding. It should come with a left and right gutter. That gutter should be in the section wrapper, not in the inner container. That's a big mistake uh, that a lot of builders make. Like, like I said, the first of, of uh, page builder, page building 101, the section, the one that we're about to do, um, actually it's the second one that we're about to do. When we get to sections lesson, People are going to be like, I had no idea there was so much involved with just a simple section. And you really need to know that there's so much involved with a, with a simple section. Why did it take Generate Press so long to get there? I don't know the whole story of Generate Press, honestly. So, um, you know, I, I've watched a few people use it. Uh, I've looked into kind of the philosophy of, of the, uh, you know, the, the team that builds it. And like I said, I want it to be successful. That's all, that's all I can say about it in fairness right now. Cle clearly I'm not even, you know, on the right version. So I really shouldn't talk about it any more than I'm currently talking about it. Uh, clip this and use it for PB 101 section. Now that, no, no, that's the thing is, you know, with PB 101, I want it to be organized. I want, I don't want it to be three hours long. I want 
Like the sections thing, it's going to be concise. It's going to be bam, 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 bam. Here's what you need to know. And then we're moving on. There's going to be some of this here, right? There's going to be some of this here because you got to know what you're looking for in terms of output. And then when we go inspect, here's the thing, guys. If you don't know HTML, here's a really good point. Let's say you're a beginner and you're like, oh, this HTML shit doesn't matter to me. I don't care if it has 18 wrappers or one wrapper. Doesn't matter to me. I just want it to be easy. That's kind of like the attitude of a lot of people. Well, guess what, my friend? The minute you need to inspect a page and figure out what the heck is going wrong, good luck in that element or spaghetti soup figuring out what's wrong because there's every, every, every element, every DOM element is multiplied by eight and the classes aren't even where you want them to be. So good luck diagnosing uh, any sort of problem. So your life, if you, if you want to use one of these messy output builders, you're making your life more complicated later on when there's a problem and you got to inspect something or you got to do something custom. And you're like, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to have to write a little CSS for this. Good luck, my friend, targeting your like seventh inner container off your class. Um, okay. Why would I put stock in a company take so long to step up and correct their shit? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, see, the divvies and the elements of the world got into a situation that they can't escape from now. So, I mean, you can't just, you got all these sites built with, you know, the divception thing going on. You can't just remove all that stuff. They're kind of, they're kind of screwed in a way. What they would have to do is like, um, you would have to fork it probably and say, okay, here's the old version. It sucked. I get it. Here's the new version, which is going to output clean code, but it's not going to be backwards compatible. You know, it's tough. It's tough. But if you're a beginner, you should want your builder to output clean code because if you can't read HTML, I guarantee you can't read HTML times eight when it's all nested and when nothing is labeled properly. Of course you can't read that HTML. It's very easy to read the HTML when it's the correct HTML. All right. No dedicated section element, but to me, that's an easy fix. Just create a block for it and use it. So good example. Um, like I said, if there's a workaround that allows you to get to the correct conclusion, it's not a deal breaker. It's only a deal breaker when there is no path to getting to the right conclusion. Uh, that's kind of my, my general position. Would I prefer a builder that helps me get to the right conclusion faster? and easier with less work and less hassle and not having to create, you know, blocks and, or presets or anything else. Yes. Yeah. I would love, that's why I use bricks. Cause when I ask it for a section, I get a section and I get the thing inside the section that I want to see. And it's all the way that it's supposed to be. And it's just a click and I can outline a page. Okay. So like, watch this. Let's say my page has eight sections. And I want to start quickly moving. And I want to start, you know, getting everything wireframed out and built. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clicks, save. I now have eight sections with semantic HTML tags, with inner containers that I can access, all ready to go. That's a lot of time saved because I wouldn't even be done with the first one in generate. I, if, I, if I had the preset, like if I made my own block, I guess I would. But again, that's extra work, right? I didn't have to do this. And, and Bricks is just... It gave me a section element because it knows that's important. If I was in Elementor, I'd still be working on the first one. And then I'd have to duplicate, 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 duplicate. And then probably try to save that as some sort of, you know, global block in there. And But then that comes with other problems because, like, does it save styling attached to that too? And then what, you know, where is it putting that styling? And like, oh, man, so many questions. Oh, gosh, I don't need all these questions when I just know I'm getting clean output and I have the right structure element. So, you know, there's so much that this kind of stuff can just get in your way if it's not done right. It's just when you use a builder where it's done right, it's like, my gosh, thank you. I can just focus on my work. I don't have to focus on fixing all the shit that's going wrong constantly because this isn't working the way that it should. But again, I, I digress back to my main argument. If there's a workaround that can get you to where you want to go, to the correct place, because we know there's an objective, correct HTML output for a section. So if there's a workaround to get there and you're okay with the workaround, not a deal breaker. It's only a deal breaker when you cut off my path 
to getting to the correct outcome. That is a deal breaker every single time. Should accent heading be in heading tags or paragraph tags? Fantastic question. Uh, this is how you, this is how I do it. This is how I recommend it's be, it gets done. Because we were talking about accent headings earlier. So here's an H2 for your section heading. Here is basic text. Here is your uh, accent heading. So I'm gonna say accent heading. And you, you get a class on it typically like H accent. Uh, then all your accent headings look exactly the same. And then what I do on this H accent class, let's just style it real quick. So we can go to typography. And now you get in a situation like, oh, Kevin, why do you use a framework? All right, well, what font size should I make this accent heading? I don't know. I mean, what, am I going to pull a number out of my ass? Like 1.6 rim? Okay, but now it's not responsive. Now, now I need to go through my breakpoints and I got to set. Or should I just be like, well, it's, it's small. Okay, so text S. There it goes. All right, and now it's fluidly responsive and, you know, time saved. What I also do here is typography. Uh, maybe on, on your accent heading, you throw a little line height in there. Uh, sorry, not line height, letter spacing, like 0.025M, throw a little bit of that. Maybe you're going to do a little bit of uppercase. Maybe you're going to give it a little bit of padding. Uh, we could just throw something easy in here, like uh, let's do 0.5M on the top and bottom. Oh, this is new. Look at this. Um, wait, is this opposites linked? Oh, this is new. I haven't even looked at this yet. Opposite sides linked, all sides linked, unlinked. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go with 1M on the left and the right. Bam. And I'm going to go with a background color here. So I'll go to like base light, base ultra light, something like that. Base light. Can you guys see that? Okay, great. Um, so now all my accent headings are going to look like this. Then what I also do, trick, trick right here, because really I want my heading to be the first thing in the DOM. So if we look at this right now, inspect, we have a clean section. Guys, how easy is this HTML to read? How easy is that? What was I just saying? All you beginners out there, you want to make your, you don't know that much HTML? Well, you better make sure it's clean because, you know, the cleaner it is, the easier it is to read. I mean, this is fantastic. Then I open this up and I have my inner container right there. There's my H2. There is my H accent. Look, it's a div. Should it be a div? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, hey, you are a P. So you're a paragraph. Is it going to give me some other wrapper? Um, by the way, shout out to PD Pablo. Let's just play that for a second. I don't know. I'm being I'm being absolutely stupid. Uh, I was thinking the other day, I was like, hey, what's a rapper that nobody wanted and nobody asked for? A PD Pablo. Uh, so I just, I threw that in there. All right. I said it was stupid. Don't, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, so. Uh, what I do, because I, again, I want, let's go look at the, uh, new, <laughs> let's refresh inspect. Okay. So here's my H2 and my P. This is what I want. I want my H2 to be the first thing in that section. Okay. So what I do is I say, Hey, my accent heading is going to get an order of minus one. And then, and then I can use something like uh, like a container or a uh, content gap, right? Because notice there's no spacing in anything. And this is what you want. You want no, and this is my biggest builder pet peeve. So many try to do this. They try to do it illogically, but you just, they're like, oh, you added a heading. That needs 20 pixels of padding on the top and 37 pixels of padding. on. No, it doesn't need any padding. Actually, please give me my things with no padding. Don't try to do anything to my elements, please. I, I added the, I didn't ask for any padding. If I don't ask for it, please don't do it. Okay, so I have no padding. So what do I do? Well, I just say, uh, I want to content gap my stuff. And that's the content gap that I like, the spacing between my elements. Okay, so now what I have is visually, I have an accent heading and a section heading. Dom wise, I have a heading that comes first and I have a paragraph that comes second. And that's how I do it. Isn't, isn't a good name for a rapper that nobody wanted and nobody asked for, P.D. Pablo? I think so. Um, I was about an inch from buying Divi when I discovered oxygen. Thank God for that. Yes, absolutely. 
All right, I think we got to get out of here. I'm on like, what? Well, what is this? Two and a half hours? I, ha- I have work to do. I have got to get stuff done. But as always, I love you guys and I thank you for being here. And I, oh, 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 I will be out of town next week. Spring break. Spring break. I will, I'm sorry. We will not be here next Wednesday. I'll be out of town. I will be back the week after. And what I will say, maybe what we'll do is plan for the week after next to do a, another live first look. I need you to comment, not in the chat, not in the chat, in the actual comments of the video, which builder live look the Wednesday after next. Should we do generate? Should we do Webflow? Should we do Pine Grow? Should, I don't want to do Pine Grow yet. I don't want to do Pine Grow yet. Let's save Pine Grow. Which one should we do though? Uh, a break dance. Maybe we'll do. Which builder should we live first look at Wednesday after next? Don't drop it in the chat. Drop it in the comments of the video. I won't see it. If you drop it in the chat, chat is dead to me. After I turn off the stream, it's gone. Okay. So put it in the comments. All right, guys. Love you. I'm out. Peace.